Welcome, bienvenidos, to another episode <laughs> of Average Jose's Sports Talk. Sports Talk. And this is a very special episode for multiple reasons. Because for the I'm first it. time, yeah, because you're in it. And for the first time in Average Jose's Sports Talk history, we're not only having a guest this episode... But we Special. got rid of the quiz bowl because we're too we got rid of the quiz stupid bowl. for that. It, we realized how bad we looked doing it. So we toss that out and we're doing something. <laughs> so we decided to do something that will make us look worse. <laughs> A bunch we're of just asking seen. random trivia. Obviously, we're not going to be good at it. <laughs> A bunch of you have probably seen like the Immaculate Grid stuff. It's been on social media forever, I feel like. It's a thing where you got like a three by three chart. And it's like a, it's like what's it, like the Putnam squares or whatever is that what they used to be called? Where you had to like Punnett squares, Punnett squares. It's like a Punnett square, but for sports. And instead of like sports. figuring out like genes and stuff, you're figuring out players. And instead of like having Jesus. fun with it, you're like realizing how terrible you are at knowing sports. So we're gonna do that instead to start the episode. Um, it's gonna be a fun episode. Broncos are still on their run. Bears had probably like the most boring game of the season last night, but they got the win. So that's something. The Cowboys got a win away from home. So that's history. Um, Oregon, that's is still, history. <laughs> Oregon is still fighting for a playoff spot. And the college football playoffs are getting closer and closer. And it is becoming a very interesting race. But before we start all of that, we've got to start with this morning's immaculate grid so let me just pull it up here for us all right you see that bad boy i do see it we're not sponsored by intermountain health um all right i feel like super bowl champ could be an easy one ray was Ray Lewis? Did Ray Lewis ever get a Super Bowl championship for the Ravens? I guess we have to say this out loud for people listening yeah. on the podcast. So the top three <laughs> are Vikings, Bills, and Super Bowl champ. The left three are Ravens, Giants, and Bears. So we got to match it up. So what player played for both the Vikings and the Bears, Bears and Bills, and what player won a Super Bowl? Um, so Ray Lewis won a Super Bowl, and we have nine guesses to do this. We literally can't get one wrong. We have to fill in all nine squares with all nine guesses. Yeah, Ray Lewis won. I think it was the last Super Bowl, and then he retired that season. All right, let's toss him in there. Oh, let's go. 24% of people say Ray Lewis. Um, crazy, because I couldn't tell you another one. <laughs> yeah, that's actually <laughs> insane. Um, I don't even know who the QB was on that Super Bowl team. When was the last time the Giants won? Eli Manning has a Super Bowl, doesn't he? Oh, he has two. Yeah. Both against Tom Brady. 36% said Eli Manning. Wow. And Bears. Give me one. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last time the um, Bears won a Super Bowl? Well, it was the 85 Bears. Um that's when they won a Super Bowl, but there's obviously been players that have been on the Bears that have did. Won the Super uh, Bowl. Did uh, Dick Buttkiss ever win a Super Bowl? It wasn't Dick Buttkiss. I think Mike Ditka won. I want to say he was the tight end of the '85 Bears. We going Mike Ditka? Nope. Don't do it. He wasn't it's tight end in '85. I know, take it out. <laughs> I think he was the head coach at the time, is what I was trying to say. No, he's... I don't think Dick Buckus was. That's not how you spell Dick. Oh, they actually spell it, like... Well, Dick Buckus and Mike Dick have played together. I don't think I realized that. I think I did realize that. Um. So the problem is... I don't know anyone on that. 85 Bears. <laughs> 85 Bears? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, uh, for the Bears Vikings slot, could we toss? Because Brett Favre played for the Bears, didn't he? No, I think I'm. Dang, I don't know why I thought he did. Dang. <laughs> um, for that we have Jared Allen. You could put Jared Allen. Jared Allen. Jared Allen. <laughs> there it is. I don't know how you spell Jared. There's 25 percent said Jared Allen. Good job. 
Um, cool, so we're done now. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. It's terrible. Oh my god. Bears gosh. Bills. I have no idea. Bears Bills. Um, I'm almost to the point where the I just. The problem heard. is there's so many answers because yeah. of how many people in the background are getting traded and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like it's hard to pick a quarterback because quarterbacks, like, I mean, unless you're doing like Ryan Fitzpatrick or something, but like, I don't know. <laughs> Did Ryan Fitzpatrick play for the Vikings and Ravens? No, I don't think he played for either of them, actually. So if I put him in there, then it counts because it's neither. That's the rule. If they play for neither team, you also get them. <laughs> um, you don't think you don't think Mike Dicka ever got a Super Bowl? I know he didn't. He only played for the Bears. They only won the Super Bowl in eighty five. That's their only Super Bowl win. That's tough. Thanks. It means there's like 22 dudes that could be out of like the whole NFL. <laughs> no, because people move around. I'm trying to think of people who have been on the Bears. Oh, it was so close. Uh, uh, the I want to say he's a lineman, a D lineman that played for the Bears last season, got traded to the Eagles, and then the Eagles lost in the Super Bowl. Oh, so I was that's hoping true. the Eagles so won saying, just how he could saying. get it. I see what you're saying. So players that were on the Bears and left. I was thinking like when the Bears won a Super Bowl. That makes sense. Okay. That definitely yeah. broadens it. <laughs> that definitely broadens it a lot more than I was well, thinking. Yeah, because I was trying to think, did Walter – look at – put Walter Payton in the search thing. 87. He was on the Bears at that time. Am I committing? Am I doing it? Oh, I thought, yeah, I was waiting for you to hit select. 31% say Walter Payton. I was thinking Walter Payton the whole time, but I was like, I don't remember when he played exactly. All okay. right, now, I don't know. I'm any. way better at this than you. I don't know. <laughs> you just literally <laughs> your team. Um, I, don't I know thought of Ray Ravens. Lewis and Eli Manning, though. Oh, Adrian Peterson. I thought Adrian Peterson was on the Ravens. Oh. I thought he played for the Ravens at one point. Cool. So just screwed us there. Cool. Can't get a perfect game, (laughs) but that's okay. I say Walter Payne. It clearly says 87. You're like, I don't know if I'm going to send that. And then. (laughs) I thought Adrian Peterson was on the Ravens. Dang. Um, I'm trying to think. Giants, Bills. I feel like. Oh, no. Odell's on the Ravens now. I was going to say Odell's on the Giants, but. Now he's on the Ravens, not the I was not the Vikings. Bills. I don't know anyone on the Bills. We bet those are next to each other. Bills Vikings. Yeah, because we could have had a. You're so close, Stefan Diggs. I was gonna say Stefan Diggs, yeah. <laughs> It was right there. I couldn't get it out. Bro, this is terrible. The worst part yeah. is if you hit give up, it doesn't fill it out. So you're just left wondering. <laughs> so then you just have to Google. Um, Do we just whip out Google at this point? Yeah, I feel like it's going to make me sad because I'm going to be like, shoot, I should have known that. We're bears and bills all right Fizan Tremaine Edmonds is a linebacker for the Bears drafted by the Bills I had no idea that Tremaine I think you can just type Tremaine Edmonds I want to do him justice and put his full name I didn't even know that was his full name oh they only put him there oh wow 32% say Tremaine Edmonds wow I've That's never actually heard crazy. Of his first name. Yeah, he was drafted by the Bills and now plays for the Bears. Yeah, I straight up did not know that. All right, what about Giants Bills? Um, oh, Hodgins, Isaiah Hodgins. Eleven percent said Isaiah Hodgins. Nice. I think he was drafted by the Bills. I don't even know who that is. You know, I've heard the name. <laughs> you know, 
You know the name. I don't know. It's crazy. I don't have he's a wide receiver. Pay in or Ray Lewis. Yeah, I know that's funny. He's the wide receiver for the Giants. I didn't know they had wide receivers. Yeah, you wouldn't think they would with how bad their quarterback is. All right, what player played for Giants and Vikings? Hmm. Hey. Brand Tarkenton. Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> That's not a real person. Whoa, this is crazy. So he played for the Giants and the Vikings. Just kidding. So he was drafted <laughs> by the Vikings in 61, played for the Giants from 67 to 71, and then got traded back to the Vikings. That happens a lot, actually. They really said, he's not as good as you guys said he was. Take him back. <laughs> 23% no, say I Fran Tarkenton. I like it. Um, all right, let's go Ravens, Vikings. Bryant McKinney played nine seasons for the Vikings and three for the Ravens. I think I've actually heard that name. 2002 to 2013. 2% said Bryant McKinney. We got a rarity score of 284. And that's cool because anytime you leave an open square, that's an automatic 100 points. So the lower your score, the better. So really, we've got 184 with our guesses. All right, time for men's men's basketball. (laughs) <laughs> I think Paul George is all NBA. This one's on you, buddy. Uh, Curry clearly. Mavericks. I think Luca made all NBA. Okay, I'm done. I don't know anyone. That was more than I knew. So the rest of the scores I got top is Nets and Jazz, and then left is Pacers, Warriors, Mavericks. Who's on the map? Kyrie was Mavericks for a little bit. Um, who's D's? D's not. This podcast is for children. Stop. It's not. Um, Mavericks and Jazz. Who played for both of them? Do you like Jazz? You like Jazz? Oh, who was on the... Donovan Mitchell. I think he was on the... Did he ever go to the... Yeah, he never went to the Warriors. I'm thinking of... Uh, oh, my gosh. What's his name? I don't remember him. Thinking you should get better. I think I'm such a casual. This is terrible. Oh, KD was on the Nets for a little bit. And he K-Dizzle. was on the Warriors. K-Dizzle. Um, I don't know any Pacers players. This is terrible. I want to say Gobert played for the Pacers at one point. Maybe I'm thinking of Rudy Gay. I'm actually thinking of neither of them, so that's crazy. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of either person. Um, what jazz? See, my hard part is I think of like current. I don't think of like I don't think of like who in the past, right? I'm not like who in the '80s played for both teams because I feel like it'd be so much easier to list. My hard part is I don't know basketball. Not too. Danielle Marshall played for. Warriors and Jazz. Cool. All right. Cool. Baseball. No <laughs> way you're just running through all of these. Dogs. What about women's basketball? I don't even know what those are. <laughs> Hockey? <laughs> are Hockey? those like team logos? Or yeah, something? it's the logos. You got the Mystics. They look so cool. Uh, The Lynx is like Minnesota's, I believe. Um, Seattle, like Storm, I think. The Pegasi, the Dallas Wings. My bad. My bad. Yeah, Seattle Storm, Minnesota Lynx, Las Vegas Aces. They were in the uh, finals. All right, and then let's go finals. soccer to finish it off. So cool. who was in the um, Premier League? And we're not sponsored. Um. I don't think he's played for any of these teams, bud. I that's the only soccer player. Ronaldo? Let's go Messi. No. How about Ronaldo? No. How about this score? Messi? Hmm. No. Ronaldo? Oh. <laughs> oh, let's go. Ronaldo played for Juventus FC and was in the Premier League. <laughs> that's crazy. That's actually insane. Yeah, these are pretty fun. I like doing them. Um, 
you can look up like previous grids too so you could do one in the past which is kind of fun you want to do another one or should we just move on with the episode do people even know this? <laughs> I don't even know should we just do all this for every episode this should just be the episode from now on I oh light work mean... Light work. Six percent said Aaron Rodgers for the Packers and Jets. You know who probably has more? Who? I'll say it. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say these. Um far. <laughs> oh yeah, because they've got like the same. They're doing the exact same thing. So That's Aaron Rodgers is going to Minnesota. That's crazy. Well, yeah, so that's Immaculate Grid for today. Um, probably do it next week. Probably be just as bad, but the goal is to get better and to increase our knowledge in football. I don't know how we could get better because uh, it's not like it tells us and it's not like they're usually the same. So, well, now you can't I know really that keep doing it and getting better. Now you know that your, your boy on the Bears was drafted by the Giants. So, if a guy ever, if a guy ever walks up to you on the street and he's like, List all the players who've been drafted by the Giants and have gone to the Bears, and I'll give you fifty dollars. And you've got one right off the bat, right there. I wouldn't because it wasn't the Giants; it was the Bills. Maybe another week then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're not wearing a hat or a hood, so everyone can actually see your face this time. So, I um, have worn a hat one time. I know. It's my in a thing. Hood, and I, I was mad. Time. It's my thing, and I was mad. So, why are you mad? Because I'm the guy that wears the hats. Anyone can wear a hat. We can both be hat guys. Nope. nope. Yeah, we can. Nope. I just need a haircut. I shower. Anyways, it's time for like it's this. time for it's time for team takes. They like to hear about my daily life too. Okay, oh it's not just this. about sports all the time. They we care about me as a person. Subs- we just lost a subscriber, and this episode's not even out yet. We don't have subscribers. We have three. It's and- you, me, and your dad. So the Broncos beat the Browns. Which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, so the Broncos beat the Browns <laughs> 29-12. to 12. Um First ever 29 to 12 final score. So I was expecting them to get rocked. Setting records. Yeah, I was expecting the Browns defense to like give us like more of a fight, I guess. Um, Miles Garrett like went out with an injury, I'm pretty sure. Like, so that helped us. Um, Russell Wilson went out with an injury, but I did see out for a little bit. He had his arm in a sling. Yeah. Um, Russell Wilson had an insane game offensively. I mean, <laughs> What's funny is I checked the stats afterwards and I was like, he's gonna say that Russell Wilson had a great game when he didn't do anything. I want to know how QBR. I know. <laughs> so Russell Wilson went 13 of 22, 134 yards, one touchdown, which is good, no interceptions, one sack, which is bad, and a QBR of almost 90, 89.2. I just, that's like, <laughs> I'm going to say the QBR before I even say the stats, okay? Dorian Thompson Robinson, 34.6 QBR. Oh, wow. Okay. He must have done terrible. Like, almost, uh, like, what is that, 55? Almost 55 less. 14 of 29, okay? One more completion on seven more attempts. 134 yards, exact same amount of yards. <laughs> One touchdown, exact same touchdowns, zero interceptions, one less sack because he wasn't sacked at all, and his QBR is 55 less. Like, how do you have 55 less when the only thing that's different is you had less yards per attempt, a few more, you know, incompletions, and less sacks? I don't understand QBRs even slightly. I don't know, dude. I didn't. I didn't realize how like exact the stats were. Um, That's just so you like, pointed that out. Makes zero sense to me. Let's look it up. How also, is... didn't they have two different QBs? Yeah. Yeah, they had to put in a. They had to put in PJ Walker or whatever. Like that just makes zero sense. 
Oh, interesting. So total QBR takes each individual play and measures the expected points added for each play. Since every play situation is different, there's a different value for EPA in each case. A team can expect 0.9 net point advantage when it's first down to 10 to go on their own 20. So basically, like starting field position plays like a big part of it. So like yards out of attempts, multiply that by 0.25. And then subtract by 0.75, I guess. Um, so you, they take into account yards out of attempts, completions out of attempts, touchdowns out of attempts, and then interceptions out of attempts. So it's all based off attempts, not actual completions. Completions is only like one piece of it. Um, so like that's why if you have like a huge attempt, like if you throw like 29 passes, but have the same yards, well, yeah, like you're you had gonna, less than 50 percent completion. Yeah, so like that's going to play into it a little bit. So it is crazy it's though insane. how insane, like one completion and seven extra passes, how big of a difference that makes for QBR. So does the sack take account at all? It doesn't you, seem like you can get it. Sacked I mean, 40 times and have a maybe for the QBR. next play because now you're starting in a negative, like, so if you get sacked now, it's second and 12 or second and 13 or whatever. So it doesn't directly um, affect it, but it does affect it. Yeah, so, um, Good game by the Broncos. I mean, obviously, Russell Wilson's stats aren't anything to like be super hyped about. But overall, like Broncos defense had a great showing. Um, they had great pressure on Dorian Thompson. There was like a few plays where I was like, they called like rough on the passer. And I was like, OK, I don't that it shouldn't have been rough on the passer. You get like a few steps before you can't hit him anymore. And it was like he threw it and then got hit. I think maybe because of how hard they hit him. But still, like. Then you have people complaining about how soft the NFL now they, like, is. And stuff. Destroyed that man, but I'm not really <laughs> they did sure. put him out of the game. Oh, uh, he was out of the game. I don't know why I they didn't put PJ Walker on the on the stat sheet instead. I should have Dorian Thompson. Robinson. I mean, Dorian Thompson played most of the game. Um, yeah, I can but mention PJ Walker was six for thirteen. Yeah, I was gonna say we can mention yards, PJ Walker. Four sacks for minus twenty eight yards. QBR of one. <laughs> I did put for the for the Cowboys game. Nevada put in their backup, and I put his in just because he had a QBR of one. I didn't realize PJ Walker had a QBR of one. I should have put him in there. That's so I didn't know you could have a QBR of one. <laughs> yeah. Um, now we see why PJ Walker isn't the starting quarterback. I was wondering earlier, and now we see. Um, I don't remember who it was, but I was looking at their thing. They had a QBR of zero. Yeah, I remember that. Zero, remember like was zero the, point zero. For an episode we were doing. Um. So, yeah, Broncos are looking good, though. Offensively, I mean, they were running – like, their run game was just disgusting. I don't – I should have put his stats in there, but let me pull them up real quick. Could have put these in there. Stop. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so insane showing by Javante Williams. 18 carries for 65 yards and no touchdown. So, like <laughs> – no, I mean they spread it I out. If you're Maj, serious, the Maj Perine had seven carries for 55 yards and a touchdown, so that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, I don't know, dude. Watching the game, I was like, dang, they've got to have some insane stats. And now I'm checking in. It's like, wow, this game was. It was a good. terrible game. I'm surprised they scored so much. <laughs> I'm surprised it was 29 to 12. Yeah, I think defense is what really got us that game. I mean, we got a safety at the end there, um, and they just put great pressure on. Dorian Thompson Robinson. That's why next week will be really interesting. Broncos play the Texans. Um, it's a big game for a couple reasons. I mean, both teams are on the bubble with a tied record. So this is legit to determine who's on the very edge of playoffs. Um, both teams are having a decent season. I mean, they're really picking it up. I think they both started in a very negative spot and now they're on a good win streak. Um, and I feel like both teams have a lot to prove. I mean, Russell Wilson got a lot of hate last season for his first season with the Broncos. Um, he's got to prove that he's still kind of that quarterback that people knew him as when he was in Seattle. Um, and then obviously you've got CJ Stroud, who's proving that he's like the best quarterback in the league, especially as a rookie. Um, dude, bro, CJ Stroud has put up insane numbers each week. Um, he's the best quarterback in the league. Easily. Easily. <laughs> but we both teams have a lot to prove. So I think if defense steps up, I don't I don't think we win this Texans game unless both defense and offense are showing up. I think even if defense is holding Texans to like 18, but our offense isn't doing anything, I think we lose that game. Um offense got away with it this game. I mean, 
what we got a safety which Crazy. yeah i think we got like three rushing touchdowns which that's why that's why it was a big rushing week for us because prior to this game the first 10 games of the season we had one rushing touchdown total this game alone we put up like two or three so i mean I if we vikings can... got their first one like last week yeah, so if we could trust our run game like we did, it takes less pressure, or it takes more pressure off of Russell Wilson um, while giving him more space as a quarterback to run play actions and stuff because now you have to respect the run game. So it was a fun game to watch. Um, I'm happy for the Broncos. They're on an insane run right now. I mean, six and five. Like, that's just insane after starting like one and five. So Super Bowl run. Um you want to talk about the Bears I hope Vikings they lose next week? So Stop. You guys can Stop. get no, so you guys can get a good draft pick. I want you guys to have a good draft pick. <laughs> yeah, Do I hope the want a good draft I hope pick. the Broncos or I hope the Bears end up with first and second overall so that they can draft a quarterback. <laughs> Bears Vikings, let's talk about it. Well, I actually do hope that you guys have a good draft pick, so you can get a quarterback that isn't fifty years old. Bro, it doesn't matter. He's insane. He's so good. <laughs> He's the best quarterback in the league after CJ Stroud. You're so silly, dude. Um so Bears Vikings. Um you know, it was they there was a game on Monday night that was played on a football field with players. Um there's really not much else I can say besides that. Um, Justin Fields, 27 of 37, only 10 incompletions. And he started off like 12 for 12. His first incompletion didn't come until his 13th attempt. He had a great first uh, 217 drive. yards. <clears throat> I won some money on this because I did <laughs> say Justin Fields for over 200. DJ Moore for over 50. TJ Hawkinson for 50 plus. And I will talk about why that is crazy in a second. Justin Fields had zero touchdowns, though, zero interceptions, three sacks, which you don't love to see, but... It's going down. It used to be like seven. Sacks. Yeah, it used to be like 12 a game. I will say, uh, though, I mean, like... 1.9 rating. The, the Vikings have, like, the highest... They're, like, pass rushing the most out of any team in the league. So to only come away oh, yeah. with three sacks is pretty impressive, so... Yeah, but the last time they did it, um, he was out for, like, 12 years. Yeah, just, last time they um, did it, he hurt himself. <laughs> I think the fact that Justin Fields walked away injury free in this game is in and of itself a win. Crazy, because when your dad texted and was like, uh, "He almost died on that one," I didn't see it yet because I was legit one play behind. Every was that time. the fumble one where he got popped? No, he didn't fumble it, but he like held the ball, was going to run. One dude hits him. He's going this way. Another dude comes and slams him. His body like ragdolls into the ground. I was like. I was expecting him to knock it up. I was expecting him to, and then he like lays there like shaking for a second and his teammates are like hovering around and then he just puts his arm up, stands up and does the next play. I was I thought for sure he was done. I thought he's out of the game. Gosh. Um Josh Dobbs, I'm not gonna say all of his stats besides four <laughs> interceptions and a QBR of nineteen point three. Poor guy. Those four interceptions, I would say at least one is on him because he threw into like not heavy coverage, but he did throw in with the, I want to say the cornerback was lurking. So that one was kind of on him. I'm pretty sure the other three were all tipped yeah. by his wide receivers. And it's just insane that I think three of them were not fully his fault. I think part of it is he was like throwing it so hard that the receivers weren't expecting it. And they're have, I think one of them, like he had to jump up for it. So it's basically like a volleyball sex balls coming in so hard. Um, I will say that first interception where the Bears, they lined up on man, but then it was a zone, so they switched uh, receivers it right just there. just falls back. And just, such, a, such a good interception, too. I think that was the Vikings' first drive, too. Like, it was huge. Well, it was kind of like watching Tua on Friday. Mm. Every time Josh Dobbs would throw, he would throw it, like, where the wide receiver was, not yeah. where they were going. Yeah. So every single throw – the receiver would have to like stop all their momentum and come back for it. Plus, like you and the announcer said, he was throwing them so hot that when you're moving and then you have to stop and come back to it, all that power, like you're already losing all your momentum. And now you have to come back for this ball that's coming in at a hundred miles an hour. 
when you're more likely like to get a ricochet. If he led his receivers, he would have had so much more complete, like so many more completions. Yeah. The harder it comes in, the more likely it's going to bounce off your pads and be a catchable ball for anyone on the field. Yeah, if it's like out in front of them, they're catching it with their hands, it's falling in there, they're able to secure it. But when they're coming back, it's hitting them every single time. Yeah. Um so I don't so think yeah, he could do have you thrown think, better, but do you think this like do you think this proves Josh Dobbs wasn't a guy? Do you think it was just a rough game for Josh? Like what do you what does this tell us about Josh Dobbs? Like, do we still think like There's the Vikings could Monday? He's Kirk Cousins. That's what it is. No, he's every QB <laughs> and team that's played on a prime time this season. I will say, so Bears had probably their best defensive game of the season. Oh yeah. Last night. Um I don't think this like I don't think it's time to count the Vikings out of a playoff run quite yet. I don't I think it was just a rough they did lose to the Broncos the week before, but again, the Broncos had a great defensive game. So it shows the Vikings struggle against like good defenses but offensively like it still wasn't terrible vikings defense is still good i mean they held the bears to 12 points held the broncos to i think it was like 21 or something um which granted these are probably not the two offenses that is a good example good example of like their defense but i think the i think the vikings still have something there that could mean something for the rest of the season but it was it was a rough two weeks of Vikings football, that's for sure. Yeah, I think they just need to they need to get that slight edge and the Lions need to keep losing to teams like the Packers. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um yeah, I mean it was a prime time game, four interceptions, and then I don't know if you can really count the fumble at the end just because it was the toss. Oh, I wouldn't toss count back, that one. Back. Yeah, I wouldn't count. That I wasn't one. like obviously it counts as a turnover, but I'm like it's. I never count those. That's no. Um, but the reason then all of a sudden you have like your left tackle has one fumble on the game for some reason because yeah, they like, lateral to him and he can't pass it twenty yards because he's a <laughs> lineman. <laughs> it is crazy seeing the ball in linesman linesman's linemen's hands though because it yeah. looks so small tiny. like i see them all the like that doesn't look real uh or it's fun to watch the linemen run exactly too. 50 yards oh yeah that it all came on like one drive where he got a super big completion and then the only touchdown of the game was just enough yards for him to get 50 exact um so i won that and then i have tj hawkinson Khalil herbert and justin fields on my fantasy team Justin Fields and Khalil Herbert and TJ Hawkinson were selling. They were the last three players I had. I needed all of them to get like 20 points, like an average of 20 points each. I needed exactly 60 to win. And then Justin Fields started off hot. Khalil Herbert started off with some runs. Went into the fourth quarter down by like 20 or something still. Hawkinson got his touchdown, got exactly 50 yards. Justin Fields started getting <laughs> some runs, some yards, some completions. Herbert started getting some runs, and I finished by winning with four. So technically, technically won by one because in our league we do points per carry, and because Justin Fields kneeled it three times at the end of the game, he got three carries. Those are rushes technically. And because it wasn't a negative amount of yards to like take away from his other rushes, because I think it's like every twenty five yards you get a point. Every twenty five, yeah. Um, you got a free three points at the end there just because he decided they wanted to kneel it three times and then kick a field goal to win it. So like you really won by one and then got away with three extra points. <laughs> a win is a win. I mean, even if I won by one, that's still winning. I won. A win is a win. Troy, if you're watching this, I hate you. <laughs> All right. I don't uh, even feel bad about saying that. I hope Troy Wa watches. Wyoming Cowboys versus Nevada. Um. Yeah. I mean, they, did you watch this game? I did watch this game. Oh, watch some of this game. Um. Wyoming Cowboys won by a little bit. It was forty-two to six. Nevada going in was like two and seven or something i mean it's 
it was our first non home game win. And I think we just finished it was our only non home game four. win. Yeah, we finished eight and four, which means we had seven home games and won every single one. If we didn't have that many home games, we would not have a bowl. been positive. <laughs> yeah. What's but going into it, I was one like, of those if we losses. Lose to Nevada, yeah. What's one of those losses was to Texas, who was like number three at the time. Like yeah, and going to the fourth quarter, we were tied at like ten or something. Yeah, so if you look at those like up. if you look at those losses, like they're not there's a few pretty bad losses like Air Force. But I mean overall, like eight and four, it's insane. It's one of those it's like one of those records where you're let's say it's like when someone's like, Oh bro, the Falcons right now are fourth in the league for the playoff spot. And you're like, oh, the Falcons, really? They must be doing pretty good. And then you check their record, and they're like five and six or whatever. And like, <laughs> there's like 10 teams with better records than them. But it's like, when you like hear about it, when you're like, yeah, dude, University of Wyoming went eight and four this season. You're like, dang, they had a really good season. And then you actually look at it, and you're like, oh, like they beat the easy teams at home, and they lost to the <laughs> bad teams away. Like, <laughs> so, I mean, because, well, they lost to Air Force. Air Force was only ranked because they beat Wyoming, I'm pretty sure. Like, that's what got Well, Air ranked. Force, when they beat Wyoming, was legit, like, 8-4, and four, which is crazy because I'm pretty sure they haven't won a game since. No. I'm pretty sure yeah. they're 8-4. and four. Yeah, so, like... I said 8-4. and four. They were 8-0, and oh, and now they're 8-4. and four. They won, They've won. lost four straight after starting undefeated. Yeah, but that was also the game where the Cowboys... Or where Air Force is quarterback threw for, like, two yards... And they won by like forty. So like it's also the game where Wyoming was literally up like fourteen <laughs> to zero and lost like twenty one to fourteen or something. Yeah. yeah, it was a bad one. But I mean um, a win is a win. Yeah, I mean it was two and something Nevada, so if they had lost just because it wasn't a home game, I would have been so been mad. Nuts. I was half expecting uh, it. I was kinda was too, and then they just destroyed. Peasley was twelve of eighteen. 165 yards, two touchdowns, 94 QBR. I think that's the highest I've seen from him. It might be the highest I've seen from anyone. Um, not a bad game. He's just really not a passing QB. I don't. I was going to say, I don't has think he? I see him in the NFL because I don't see him throwing a ball. I see him being <laughs> a running back in the NFL. If anything, has he attempted more than 20 passes this season? I don't know if he's gotten more than 12 completions this season. You keep talking. I wanna I wanna research this. Um their main their Nevada's main QB, uh Shane Illingworth, went fifteen twenty seven, hundred and seventy five yards, one interception, QBR of nine point two. Yeah. Which is crazy because the backup QB went two <laughs> of three, eight yards, a QBR of one. So their combined QBR is 10.2. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> like, it's just, that's disgusting. All right, um, here's his... Like I here, said, it was pretty much a free, free win. Here's Peasley's completion attempt breakdown. Also, I didn't realize this, but the Cowboys started the season 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 5, and 0. Oh. So, there's that. Um, are they 8 and 3 now? Play Texas, like... Yeah, Texas isn't Texas showing is like pretty early in the season. Yeah, Texas doesn't show up on the stat sheet. What the heck? ESPN, get it together. Are you looking at basketball? No, Andrew Peasley, Cowboys, QB. His game log for 2023, it's got... He didn't play against Texas, dumbass. That's right. Well, that was <laughs> uh, uncalled for. Look at the actual team, bro. That was a bit uncalled okay. for. I'm looking up his completion stats. Why would I look at the actual team? Because you're just talking about records and stuff. No, they played Texas game three. They started well, Peasley started. Peasley started 5-0. Because <laughs> he didn't play Texas. Um. All right. So It's crazy. We didn't have, like, besides the Texas, we didn't have an away game until week seven. Mm-hmm. All right. So Peasley went 18-34 week one. <laughs> uh, 11-16. 515, 1625, 1927, 1525, 1020, 1522, 1122, 1417, 1218. So his biggest, his most passes he attempted was 34. Least amount was. I that were almost 30. 
yeah, least amount were 15, and then 25, 27, 25, 20, 22. So he, he did a few over 20, I'd say. I mean, most of his passes, most of his games were over 20 attempts. My bad, Peasley. I didn't mean to call you out like that. I was unfamiliar with your game. <laughs> so we'll probably lose What's the bowl game, though, because that'll be a way. sitting at 2 and 10 isn't even last in the Mountain West standings. Really? Who is? New Mexico and San Diego State are somehow lower. New Mexico? Like, I'm pretty sure... Let's see. Um... Because the reason is because Nevada's two wins... Oh, New Mexico State. ...are against San Diego and New Mexico. So, because they lost to Nevada, they are sitting lower than Nevada, even though Nevada's 2-10. and ten. They're legit under Nevada, 2-10 and 10 Nevada, because both of them lost to Nevada. San Diego State lost 0-6. <laughs> to six. Oh Nevada gosh. legit scored two field goals, I'm pretty sure. That's, yeah, that's just disgusting. All right, let me see this. Let me... Wyoming is fifth in the Mountain West at eight and four total, five and three in conference. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's so weird. New Mexico's Mountain West, but like New Mexico State is a different conference. Um, where was it? New Mexico State is in the USA conference. So, I didn't know that was a conference. Yeah. Um. Anyways, Oregon versus Oregon State, the Civil War rivalry week. Oregon wins 31 to 7. Um, great game by Bo Nix. I mean, 33 of 40 for 367 yards and two touchdowns. Um, does that fit into your great game? <laughs> Dang it. I mean, yeah, three, 33 yeah, completions for <laughs> 33 completions for 367 yards is wild. Um, they all had to just Broke be like put up three two yards with. 200 yards, but he can't put up more than two with almost 400 yards. Oregon State's got a good defense, though. I mean, they got a pretty. They held Oregon Washington. Or f- touchdown three. Did he have one rushing or two rushing? I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. Win in his life? Last week. Oh, the Oregon State game or the last week? The Arizona State. The one that just happened. The Oregon State game? Yes! God, The game that we are talking about right now. Why would I be talking about a different game? Because, dude, you don't make sense most of the time. Why would I bring up him rushing for a, a touchdown in a different game than the one we're talking about right now? I don't right know. Now? I don't understand what you do sometimes. He had a rushing touchdown. It was 16 yards there. on a fourth down, I'm pretty sure. There. Are you happy? That I had to do all the work for things that you looked up? What do you mean all the work? I didn't look up anything. Anyways, he's only thrown two interceptions this anything. season. I just make these numbers up. Okay, it was a first and ten. I could have swore his fourth down, but first and ten he ran for six. <laughs> so three touchdowns down. total. Yeah. Um, and then DJ Moore. You um his name's like Iegalele. That's not a it typo. Is, yeah. That's how it's spelled. Um, I didn't it's think really, it was a typo. It's a really cool didn't name. Didn't know how to say it. Um, he had a he had a decent game. I mean, nineteen and thirty five for two hundred twenty yards, touchdown and an interception. Um, not terrible. I mean, not the not best. Decent but enough to win. Not good enough to win. Um, Ooh. it's a big win for Oregon though because it keeps them right on the edge. I think they're number five now for AP polls. Uh, oh no. Six. I think there's still a six. I think there's still Florida State above us just because Florida State's still undefeated. But um, this keeps Oregon in for playoffs. Pac 12 championship is Oregon versus Washington, number four ranked Washington. So that'll be a big one. I don't see them letting like the loser of that one in the playoffs. I don't know. I could see it where if Oregon wins that. They give Oregon the playoff spot and Washington's out. Just because Oregon has had a bigger point differential for the season. Um, but, I mean, who knows? It's a group of guys who could probably hate Oregon and just not let them in. Um, they so. still haven't updated the Heisman tracker. Really? It's the same. 
Um, all right. It says for Heisman watch, it's down to Bonex and Jaden Daniels. I could see that. I don't really think any other quarterbacks are keeping it close know. with them. How reliable the source is, or how they're deciding that, but it says it's between Bo Nix and Jaden Daniels. I mean, Bo Nix's season stats are insane. He's got almost four thousand yards, thirty-seven touchdowns, and only two interceptions. Someone pointed out that he's got Zero. he's got similar stats to Marcus Mariota for his Heisman year too. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't have any competition. I mean, yeah, but... Name one other person. <laughs> I mean, he was the only candidate for the entirety of the season, but... 2014. Let's see what the 2014 Heisman race was. Let's check this out. I thought Jameis Winston was... Sure. All right. So you got Melvin Gordon. Amazing. Um, Amari Cooper. Um, Trayvon Boykin, he's good. Um, JT Barrett, uh, J- Jameis Winston, uh, Tevin Coleman, uh, Dak Prescott. What? <laughs> yeah, I saw Dak Prescott. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, Dak Prescott was the same Heisman. Uh, he was a sophomore. Dak Prescott was a year below Marcus Mariota. Hmm. Uh, wait, nope. He was a junior. I was reading Scooby Wright. They were the same year. <laughs> well, because I read it and I was like, wait, it says linebacker. Dak Prescott played a linebacker? And I was like, wait, nope. I'm stupid. You went from a linebacker to a, <laughs> an NFL QB? Bro, listen how close let's not close this race was. Marcus Mariota got first with seven hundred and eighty eight votes for first place. Melvin Gordon got second with thirty seven votes for first place. <laughs> I knew it wasn't gonna be close. You said listen how close and I was like, it's not even gonna be a little close. Yeah, that's crazy. And then the twenty fifteen Heisman winner was Derrick Henry with Christian McCaffrey right behind him. Oh wow. This is actually a crazy Heisman class. So it was Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield, Keenan Reynolds, Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, and then Connor Cook and Trevon Boykin. But that's like so many running backs. That's three, four, five running backs who are now in the NFL. That's an elite class. That's a good Heisman class. Well, was I was thinking, I was like, wait, I thought Baker won it, but he uh, came close a couple times. No, he was the first overall drafted. That's what uh, I was thinking of. Bro, Christian McCaffrey got second as a sophomore. That's actually nuts. I would get first as a freshman. Um, Jameis Winston got it first as a freshman in 2013. But do you want to hear who he was going against? <laughs> so he was on track to win it twice? Yeah. This is this is the 2013 Heisman class. Jameis Winston wins it as a freshman. He beats AJ McCarron, Jordan Lynch, Andre Williams, Johnny Manziel, Trey Mason, Bryce Petty, Derek Carr, Braxton Miller, and Kadeem Carey. Hmm. <laughs> he's, he got plays a, under Derek Carr. he's got a free Heisman trophy. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah. We actually don't need to vote at all. Oh, I love looking at highs. 2012. Johnny Manziel got it in 2012 as a freshman. Holy cow. Who else was... Yeah, these these, dra- these Heisman classes are terrible. Johnny Manziel, <laughs> Manti Teo, Colin Klein, Marquise Lee, Braxton Miller, Jadavion Clowney, Jordan Lynch, okay. Tavon Austin, Kenjin Barner, and Jarvis Jones. What's crazy is we're hating on all these people. They were probably like insane in the NFL. Yeah, we're just we too never... casual and too young to know. I don't know if they were because, like, what that was Johnny Manziel's class. Like, I remember when Johnny Manziel was in the NFL, and none of these dudes were like doing like, anything. There was so much hype behind Johnny Manziel. I couldn't tell you what he actually like did in the NFL. I know he didn't play long, and I know his career was wasted. But like, 
The only yeah. reason I know about it is because it was so hyped that Johnny Manziel was in the NFL. This one's interesting. So 2011, Robert Griffin III wins. Okay, He beats Andrew Luck, Trent Richardson, Monte Ball, uh, Tyron Matthew, Matt Barkley. Tyron Matthew was in the 2011? Yeah, oh as a sophomore. Uh, Case Keenum. <laughs> Um, Kellen Moore, Russell Wilson, and LaMichael James. You said Andrew Luck? Yeah, Andrew Luck got second. I Andrew... forget so much that Andrew Luck is not like a super old QB that's from yeah. like the early well, 2000s. I, I, forget, I forget that that he played in the NFL for like three <laughs> seasons, got sacked too many times, that he was like, no, I have to retire because my body hurts. I forget that Andrew Luck hasn't been 30 for his whole life. <laughs> I can't picture Andrew Luck in, like, college. Um, I look at Andrew Luck and I'm like, oh, this guy is 40 and he's been playing in the NFL for 25 years. It's like, no, he right. played for three seasons. So 2010 Heisman, Cam Newton, Andrew Luck, LaMichael James, Kellen Moore, Justin Blackman, Denard Robinson, Ryan Mallett, Colin Kaepernick, Andy Dalton, and then Owen Merechich. Merechich. So yeah, dude. Heisman. Heisman voting. Can you guess who won Heisman in 2000? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I could just... to go back to the beginning of the Heisman. <laughs> just keep working our way back for the rest of the episode. Like, what was it that we... Last time I was at your house, you kept naming them off. Yeah, I don't remember. Like, oh, it was TV the like, naming sexiest, off the sexiest man or whatever. Yeah, and like every single one, and you're like, so yeah, that was for this year. So last year, and you just kept going and going. Gosh, yeah. That was, I do rabbit holes too it's much. like you're autistic. That's exactly what it is. News around the world. You know around what I just the world around. What? We didn't introduce ourselves. Oh my gosh. We got to scrap this whole episode. <laughs> You're right. Holy cow. So I was like, I never said my name was, I never said I'm the other guy. Other Cullen. Guy Cullen. People aren't going to know what, what a podcast this is now. Right. Cause you, they don't know the average Jose's thing. Cause you said that you just didn't say, name. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> All right, we had some big games in college this week, especially with college playoffs getting closer. Um, number three, Michigan played number two, Ohio State. This is probably the biggest game of the week. I mean, both these teams are in the playoffs. It had huge repercussions for a lot of reasons. Um, Michigan wins that game 30-24, to 24, um, beating Ohio State 30-24 to 24 because Michigan won 30-24. Yes, to 24. Against Ohio State, who lost thirty to twenty four. It was a BS game. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Ohio State it is was. What are you saying? It's a BS game for? Because I watched it. What? What about it was BS? That Ohio State lost. Okay, you have no takes. Um, AP poll. Now that is has, my take. That's a terrible take. You have no Let evidence me find to back. It. Finding it. Finding what? Someone else's opinion for you to shout? What does that even mean? That you don't have your own opinion and you're just basing this off something you read on Twitter. What does Twitter have to do with What are you trying to find right now? The play-by-play. Why do you need a play-by-play? Because I don't remember word-for-word, bar-for-bar what happened in the game. Ohio State lost. That's what happened. Ohio State is now... No, I was watching it and it was just like... I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> it. Everything, bro. That last interception was BS. How was that BS? You think it wasn't a catch? I don't think he caught it. That was such a clear catch. He had both arms under the ball and he side rolled. Oh my gosh. It's whatever. I mean, Ohio State's still number one. No, we're watching this clip now. We're watching this clip because... Nah, that's... Ah! It's so loud. Yeah, we're... Hang on. YouTube has ads. We have to get through these... Get through all these ads. Uh, Hang on. Just wait. 
Want to hear something funny? Right. What? I was just kidding. I don't think that it wasn't a catch. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. That was such a catch. Hold on. I'm waiting for it to catch up. Okay. He had both arms under that ball. I'm saying like five frames. I'm not even sure if we're watching Michigan right now. <laughs> nah, that was a catch. It was a good game. I don't even know because you're on like zero Wi-Fi. So. <laughs> uh, Michigan won. Ohio State's now at number six on AP polls. Still waiting to see. I think that's dumb. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge you drop. You lose to a super like top team and you drop to sixth. After being second, like uh, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, still waiting to see like what the playoff rankings are because those are supposed to come out like today. I'm pretty sure, but um, Ohio State's head coach is now one and three against Michigan, and everyone is calling for Ryan Day to be fired um, because he can't beat Michigan. <laughs> like he could probably beat these. Stop. Um, <laughs> Blake Corum had 22 carries for 88 yards and two touchdowns. Pretty good run game. Um, Ohio hey, State Blake got. Corum. Ohio State got called for one penalty for five yards, which is just hilarious because all the Ohio State fans on Twitter were like, all the all the penalty calls were in Michigan's favor. The rest were clearly helping Michigan. It was like Ohio State got called for a five yard penalty. Michigan got called for like I think like three penalties for like sixty or something yards. Maybe it was like thirty. But yeah, like okay. But I mean it was a good game all around. Um Michigan definitely proved like I think after this Michigan's now the favorite to win the uh, college championship. So, what are you we'll doing see. Friday? Watching the Oregon Washington game. You could be watching it in Las Vegas, Nevada, because we're going, baby. We could have been in Vegas. I'm going crazy. We can. It says tickets as low as forty four dollars. Still, no. There's no way tickets are at forty four dollars right now for that game. This is vivid seats. We can get one to six tickets, row eight, section four thirty one. I mean it's not obviously it's not gonna be great views, but like forty five dollars a ticket for a in Las Vegas, Nevada to watch Oregon Washington play. But what would a flight look like? Don't start driving right now. I don't, I don't have a car. I said I'll start driving right now. Oh. You have to fly. Okay. Um, let's see. When would we leave? We would leave. I guess it wouldn't be round trip. That'd be the hard part. Then we got to figure out how to like, I'd have to buy like two tickets. Left Friday. $114 to fly out there on Friday. Well, I guess we'd probably leave the day before. It's $100. We'll talk. Uh, <laughs> number eight, Alabama beat Auburn. Did you watch that one? No, I saw the last play, but yeah, that's so, the only thing I saw from so it. So Alabama wins 27-24 in the final play of the game. Well, I guess not final play of the game because Auburn got the ball and then almost threw pick six. Um, but Alabama won. It was fourth and goal on the 31 because of like yeah. penalties and sacks and stuff. They just threw it as far as he could <laughs> at a dude who is on said, one-on-one coverage. Um, <laughs> insane catch, insane throw, wins the game. In the very corner of the end zone, like barely yeah. makes it. It was yeah. insane. What's insane is they rushed, I want to say, three guys, which first off, why would you not put more pressure on a quarterback? Fourth and goal, they have to score. Rush three guys. So they're trying to cover that Hail Mary in the end zone. It's the only thing they can and do. Then, this was the worst part. They left a QB spy just standing in the middle of the field. <laughs> yeah. Auburn had a QB spy. Fourth in goal, 31 yards, had a QB spy with the rest of their coverage in the end zone because that's where all the receivers are, right? So he's just standing there you run, I'm going to get you. Like, it's not going to, like, the quarterback's not going to start running, and then, like, seven dudes are going to be able to come. Like, you know. Yeah, by the time he gets, like, yeah, obviously he'll pick up probably 10, 15, even 10, 15. 20 yards. Does it matter? <laughs> all the other defenders are coming up and should be able to get him. Like, Yeah, so they have four guys on the line there, right? Seven guys in the end zone. Seven guys in the end zone. And it was still one-on-one coverage in the corner over there. 
That's the insane part to me. Say it's seven guys. If if Alabama has five linemen and the QB, right? That's six dudes right there, right? And they send they send five of their guys down to the end zone. Okay, that's a five on seven matchup. You're letting it be a one on. That was just insane to me, dude. Auburn deserved to lose after that. So, well, I'm pretty sure this is from the same game. I saw a clip of it. Like I said, I didn't watch the game, but I saw clips. Alabama has the ball. I don't think it's the same drive. Near the end zone, the QB is like rolling out with it, looking to throw. Passes the line of scrimmage by like five yards or something. And then throws the ball. Oh, yeah. Alabama did it twice. (laughs) He did it twice. He was way past the line of scrimmage, dude. Like, Like he was like five yards past it stops throws it and was like and i was like is this real is this a... <laughs> i was like did a group of guys just like put on some pads to look like alabama yeah it was an insane it was so game. funny i mean dude it was that was wild i think alabama still has a chance at college playoff but they need like a lot of people to lose yeah it's like a one percent chance or something so we'll probably see Nick Saban at a lot of half times begging to get into the playoffs again this year. Um, Last never... year it happened, and everyone was mad that Alabama wasn't in the playoffs. Yeah, because they saw the TCU Georgia game. <laughs> yeah, because they watched, and they're like, "This is awful. We want Alabama." Actually, It'd be funny if he just comes on and he just says, "TCU Georgia." Never forget <laughs> what happened last season. <laughs> Everyone's like. Put Alabama in there. <laughs> um, number 10, Louisville beat Kentucky. Just kidding. Kentucky beat number 10, Louisville. Uh, 38 to 31. I was like, why did I put this in here? Number 10 won. Uh, Kentucky beats Louisville, though. Crazy, because this basically ruins Louisville's chances for a playoff spot. Oh. Oh. Um, Kentucky's oh. QB went 12 to 22 for 207, or 206 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. So he had a pretty good showing. Um, but Louisville had 114 more yards than Kentucky. That's why you got to be better, bro. Exactly. Yards Heard don't mean it. anything. Heard it here first. Be better. Well, I, I honestly, yards don't mean anything. I forget. I want to say it was last week when we were doing this. Um, one team had like an extra 200 yards or something and lost by like a lot. Like it, it straight up does not matter how many yards you have. It's about touchdowns. You could score a touchdown from the 10 every time. You could have 40 total yards in the game, but you have four touchdowns for 28 points. Like, if your defense is playing and getting the ball back and you're just constantly getting touch, like short touchdowns, mm-hmm. yards do not mean a single thing. No, yeah. Like, if you're never doing anything with it, like, it doesn't, you could march it all the way to the goal line and then get a turnover or something. Like, yeah. So, I mean, that's a big loss for Louisville. Um, yeah, that's tough. But you want to talk about uh, some NFL games? All righty. Honestly, this saved my fantasy week, too. <laughs> um, Bills versus Eagles. Eagles won 37-34. The reason this saved my fantasy week is Eagles kicker, what's his face, going into like the fourth quarter had – three points i think i'm pretty sure he had three points and yeah. it was only because they had three touchdowns and he made the pats at the very very end of the game to tie it up at 31 to go into overtime he kicks a like 58 yarder or something um in our fantasy league a field goal of 50 plus is five points so that put him at he kicked eight. a bomb of a field goal bro yeah, put him at eight and then they go into overtime bills kick a field goal get it 34 he almost does it again they get to the range where it would be like a 50 yarder he could tie it up going to another overtime i was praying for that to happen because that would be five more points to put him at 13 points as a kicker unfortunately they scored a touchdown and he did not kick another field goal because it was overtime and the touchdown won it but yeah, that was insane. Um, 
I just really like to talk about my fantasy team, if you couldn't tell, <laughs> as I bring it up every time we discuss things. Josh Allen is now 0-6 in overtime, even after they changed the rules because people were complaining about Josh Allen. Um, That's insane. That not getting chances. Oh, in it's six. No, what's insane is the Patriots game. I told you I needed to go into overtime. Mm-hmm. So that way Saquon could get, you know, more. He misses the kicker, misses the field goal. It doesn't go in overtime. It finishes 10, seven. After he did that, I was like, no one ever goes into OT. Like every week I should bet for no overtimes. Yeah. And then I was like, honestly, I bet Josh Allen's going to go into overtime because he's like the, I was like, no one goes in overtime besides Josh Allen. I yeah. never see overtimes unless it's Josh Allen. That same day, Josh Allen goes into overtime for the sixth time in his career and loses again. It was, I spoke, I spoke into existence without speaking words. Yeah. It's kind of insane that this dude's struggling. So much. <laughs> I feel so bad. It's almost guaranteed that he loses. Oh yeah, it's yeah. That's insane, dude. It was if a good it's game. Overtime. I'm like, oh cool. Which I was also thinking about. I think when it was happening in college, if Josh Allen went in overtime, it was like, oh, this is gonna be an insane like four overtimes, and he's yeah. probably gonna win. And now that it's NFL, it's like, yeah. But I mean, that's because in win. college, like they could score, and then Josh Allen would still have a chance to score and tie it up. Now it's like. Eagles scored. Game over. I mean, just, Bill Bills had the ball first, you know. So if he scored, it would have ended it. And I don't know how they didn't right, score. They I think they got field, to like the they thirty did. They or got whatever. A field goal. Yeah, I don't know how they didn't get a touchdown. Um, they got to like the thirty or whatever, and I was like, "Bro, how are you not finishing this drive? Come on!" <laughs> so yeah. that was insane. The time of possession was disgusting. Bills had it for forty minutes compared to the Eagles at twenty-seven minutes. It was an awful game until the very end. Like it was, which I mean. That's what that's what the Chiefs did to beat Jalen Hurts was they just kept the ball out of his they hands. They just held on to it, yeah. They just didn't let the Eagles have possession. So, I mean, the fact that the Eagles can still put up 37 points with that big of a difference in possession time is a good sign for what they can do this season and that they've been working on it because now they're making the most out of every single drive they have. So it's like, great, you had the ball for 40 minutes. Guess what? We put up 37 <laughs> points in 27 minutes. So, like... um. I feel like that's something they've been working on a lot since that Super Bowl loss because they were like, all right, we need to make it to where anytime we have the ball, we're going to put Dude, points sure. on the board because we're not wasting possessions after that. So I think it's cool. I think like that's just cool to see that they're improving on that. Um, yeah, I mean, closest call the Eagles have had besides their one loss. and <laughs> Besides the time that they didn't win the Lost game. to the Jets. <laughs> Which is still crazy. I can't believe the Jets did that. Um, That's, Hertz yeah. had 200 even passing yards, which I don't know. I don't see Hertz as a passer. Like, obviously, he has. Is it AJ Brown that had like 125 average per game or something? Was it Brown? Yeah. yeah. That's um, like one of his go to. So, I mean, 200 is not great, but it, he's also a running quarterback. Josh Allen. 29 for 51 attempted 51 passes which is insane you saw that i was like what? like that's 139 yards two touchdowns and interception but he also carried it nine times he was their top rusher one yards and two touchdowns yeah, he's their top rusher um all right so jalen hurts four total touchdowns and so, over 400 total yards jalen hurts in that game the yards, the pass stats, like you said, he also had 14 carries for 65 yards, but two rushing touchdowns, which one yeah. of them was to win the game. Um, yeah, he's definitely more of a split QB where you won't see one side of those stats being like super heavy. Like you wouldn't see like a 400 yard passing game and two yard rushing game. Like you would see like a 200, 100 type. Like he'll probably put up like 300, 400 total, most likely, but it's going to be very. Yeah. Split. I also didn't realize Jalen Hurts went to Oklahoma. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a good game. Um, shows that the Bills still have a lot of promise in them this season. I mean, that's probably their toughest game of the season, I'd say. And they sent it into sure overtime. They have promise, but they're not winning games. So. Right. That's and the hard have, part. They're competing with the Dolphins. So. Yeah. They're they almost as good as the Broncos. Have promise. They just have to start winning games yeah they can't go to playoffs if they don't start winning these games that they show promise in 
but they can't finish. It's just way too close for it to yeah. Uh, Packers Lions. That was that was a game. Did you watch it? Yeah, I called it. I yeah, you knew the going Packers. Into, were I was like, I feel like the Packers have this win. I don't. Did you Lions take the Packers? Already beat the Packers. You did take the Packers. Oh, I gave you the Packers. You gave That's me why. The Packers. Um, but like even just like sports betting, I was like, I think I'm gonna take the Packers. Like, I didn't because all the other games I didn't know enough, but I did call Packers. Um, Lions are 0 and 13 on Thanksgiving. Um, when for the waxing kibis moon. Thank you. Which is insane that. We saw the stat before the game started. We all made fun of it. He still bet on the Lions. And the Lions held true to not winning <laughs> on Thanksgiving with a waxing gibbous moon. So uh, uh, clearly, you know, all this astronomy stuff is real. And we need to stop making fun of all the astronomy people. It matters. Uh, Goff went 29-44 for 332 yards and two touchdowns. I saw an in-game bet that was like, oh, Goff for like 160 yards in the second half. And I was like, there's no way he's doing that. Going into the second half, I think he had 80 yards, and he finished with 332. So he had he good yards. Do that. He threw two touchdowns. The 29 to, out of 44 is kind of a gross number. But, yeah, I mean – He's not bad. Better it was than Josh Allen's. Yeah. Josh Allen had 29 completions, but 54. seven more attempts. Yeah, but he also has seven more yards. <laughs> <laughs> For each, uh, each For each attempt mid, more. Yeah. He got For each extra, extra attempt, he threw an extra yard. Uh, so that means that Josh then, Allen's QBR is probably 10 times better. No. Uh, Jordan Love, <laughs> hate him. MVP. 22-32, 286 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, how are you not even going to pass 300 yards? Um, <laughs> you trash. Um, and Love still sucks and shouldn't be on the team. And then the Lions had three turnovers. So, You think that Jordan Love, so we're going to start seeing more out of him this season? You think like, he's finally... I think he should be off the team, probably. Yeah. We won't even talk. About I think it. we should just dissolve the back. We can just move on. It's fine. We can move on. Um, and now, the weekly Cowboys disappointment tracker. Do, 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 do. Cowboys play the Commanders this week. Cowboys obviously won 45 to 10. That's da- not obvious. Dak went 22 out of 32 for 331 yards and four touchdowns. Still no interception. Cubbies. Which means he's sitting at six interceptions for the season. I included it this week because we talked on about our it. Interception tracker. Our interception tracker. If you guys remember, he said I will throw less than ten interceptions this season. Which means um, he's three left in five games remaining. And in those five games, he's playing Eagles, Bills, Dolphins, and Lions, who all their Lions defenses are all. Always skip teams. I saw the Seahawks. The Seahawks game doesn't matter. You don't think he can throw an interception against the Seahawks? I don't think he will. Seahawks defense isn't there. Um, Cowboys are currently 8-3, and three, but they have not beat a team who has a winning record this season. All the teams they've beaten don't have a winning record currently. Um, I don't know what it was when they beat them. Maybe they had a winning record. Who knows? But are they the Dolphins of the NFC? Are the Dolphins of the NFL? I mean... But if the, the, the if the Dolphins are the Dolphins, if the NFL is the NFL, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> um, Cowboys Seahawks. I would say that I feel pretty good about a Cowboys win there, but I want to point out they lost to Arizona. I also want to point out that this is a Thursday night game. <laughs> a trash game. Actually, yes, I do remember that it's a Thursday game because the guy Thursday I'm playing game. almost his entire team is Cowboys. And since it's a Thursday primetime <laughs> game, I'm hoping they're gonna have just a terrible like four points each, do nothing. It's gonna be so bad, dude. So um but we've got some big news when it comes to the NFL. Colin, yes, we do. Do you want to talk about this? You were so excited. 
I was. Um, hold on. I have to find the exact day. Breaking so news. on Monday, as of Monday, as of Monday, the Carolina Panthers fired head coach Frank Reich. Get him Reich, out of there. I don't know. Um, which makes them the second NFL team this season to fire a head coach midseason. Yeah, Raiders the first. did it already. Raiders, that's right. That's right. Um, but so that's the big news. That is big news that Panthers, as of right now, don't have an actual head coach. I mean, going starting one and ten would do that to you for sure. I need them to not do good with this next coach. <laughs> I need them to stay at one and sixteen. Um we do have some news that X Panthers tight end. Um, I lost his name. Greg Olson. Greg Olson. <laughs> I lost his name and I was blanking in my head. Greg Olson said, "Not the that, not the not the website that sells pictures of Jesus." No, not the Jesus selling. The Fox analyst, former tight end Greg Olson, said he would be interested to be the head coach if the owner of the Panthers reached out to him and talked to him about it. So how funny would it be if they potentially we could see him as head coach of the how Panthers. funny would it be if they hired him and then they go oh and ten to start or oh and eleven to start next season. That he would like be funny. Somehow <laughs> does worse when the other guy did one in ten. They're like No, I honestly wow. I don't see him being like a good head coach. I just think it's crazy that he was just like I will be your head coach. If you it talk reminds to me, me, it reminds me of when um, the Jets were looking for a quarterback, and RG three was like, "Yeah, man, like there's a lot of like veteran quarterbacks like myself um, who <laughs> feel like they could play right now, like myself included, could play for a team like the Jets right now. Myself on the Jets, as I well as other quarterbacks. Um, I feel like I'm ready to play football again if the Jets wanted me, as as well as other quarterbacks, um, put me on the Jets." I have some more news. Oh. Carolina Panthers owner, David Tepper, the guy that Greg Olson said he would say yes if he reached out to him, Mm -hmm. admits that the team originally intended to draft CJ Shroud. Oh, my gosh. Which sucks to hear if you're Bryce Young. That's terrible, bro. The owner of your team just came out and was like, we didn't want that guy. Um, I, th- I now, think so. I, I think mean, too many people are hating on Bryce Young, though. I mean, if you watch some rookie, of the, no one's expecting what CJ Shroud is doing. If no you're, one's if, expecting yeah. a rookie to come in and just be insane. Like it's crazy that if you're CJ watching doing. his receivers, bro. I saw one clip. His receiver jumped out of bounds while trying to catch the ball, and I was like, "What are you doing?" Like, I think that one stat it was like he's like the most accurate quarterback, and he's also the quarterback whose receivers have the least separation on like defenders. So he's yeah. got the smallest windows and he's still somehow getting them in there. So he's not a bad quarterback. The Panthers also don't have anyone. They don't have any pass protection. I think that Bryce Young has a good shot at being a decent NFL quarterback if you just get him the tools to do so. That'd be crazy. Um, David Tepper confirmed that they're supposed to trade to number two with the Texans. So they could take C.J. Stroud because they believe that Houston would have taken Bryce Young at number one. He said that they were totally confident in that pick. But (laughs) my thinking is, how much can we actually believe him? Yeah. How much can we be like... Is it like a LeBron thing? he totally meant to. Or he was like, uh, well... um, Is it like a LeBron thing where he's like... Yeah, I knew C.J. Stroud was going to be amazing. Yeah. How funny um, would it be if they were like, if they were like, all right, let's trade our pick to the Texans. We know the Texans will take Bryce Young. We'll get CJ Stroud and we get whatever we get out of the trade. It's a beautiful deal. So Texans are like, you guys want to give us your first round pick and we just got to give you like a player in a second round? Uh, sure, I guess. So they do it and it's like, do, 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 do. And with the first pick of the NFL draft, the Texans select CJ Stroud. <laughs> like they still like pick CJ Stroud over. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, how can you be confident that like, they wanted Bryce Young? You don't bro. know what they're playing. It's not like you're like, do you guys want Bryce Young? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, we're gonna get him instead. So that's actually yeah. that's so funny. Plus, it's like you have the number one pick. Why didn't you just pick CJ Stroud? Yeah, you, you had the number one. If you were thinking back, about it, bro, just do it. Like, yeah, that's, that's why, why I'm like. Uh, 
how That's how like serious that. is that? Because you have the number, you can pick whoever you want. It's not just because oh, Bryce Young is a number one prospect. We should it'd be get him. it'd be so funny if they were like, hey CJ, we wanted you, and then all of a sudden CJ Stroud's like, it's like CJ Stroud, breaking news, opts out of his contract and goes to the Panthers. Goes <laughs> to the like, Panthers. Like what? He's like, oh, you guys wanted me. Oh. No one's ever wanted me before. Um, I heard the Texans wanted Bryce Young. <laughs> they told me after they got me. <laughs> You're on thin ice, You're CJ. Not he wanted Bryce, Bryce Young. Young. You're on thin ice. That was like the first thing they told him. And then he doesn't say, and they're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> um, all right, let's speed run the rest of this news around the world. Um, Champions League, match day five is today, so we won't have anything for you guys this week. Hopefully next week, though. Um, NBA, there's actually been some big changes in the NBA. Um, in the West, the Timberwolves are leading 12 and four with the Thunder at second, 11 and five. Nuggets are third now. Um, the Lakers are 10 and eight for our weekly LeBron hate tracker. Um, so here's the insane part. Now. Yeah. Here's the insane part. Celtics are on top at 13 and four with the Magic Bucks and Sixers right behind at 12 and five. The Orlando Magic are on like a five game win streak or something. Like, out of nowhere. Insane. In-season tournament-wise, the Lakers, Pelicans, Kings, Pacers, Bucks, and Magic all lead their groups um, with the start of the tournament coming on Monday next week. So teams better lock it in if they have any games left because it's coming up soon. As for the NHL, the Bruins are leading their division in the East at 14-4-3, and and the Rangers are leading theirs at 15-4-1, and and the Colorado Avalanche are leading their division at 15-6 and in the West, and the Knights 14-5-3 and in their division. The Avs are currently it up. They're on a four-game win streak right now. So I noticed that. So. It's pretty big. College championships are happening this weekend on December, Friday, December 1st, Friday. We have the Conference USA Championship between New Mexico State and Liberty and the Pac-12 Championship between Oregon and Washington and Nevada. Tickets are $47. Get yours today. (laughs) (laughs) December 2nd. No, 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 no. no. We got to get that. (laughs) Uh, Big sale. Big 12 championship, Oklahoma State versus Texas. Mid-American is Miami, Ohio versus Toledo. Mountain West, Boise State versus UNLV. They had to use like computers to figure this one out because they had no idea who should do it. Uh, the American – Yeah, they had to like get like an algorithm out because they were like, we don't know. Because I think there's like four teams that could have been in. Um, for the American championship, we got SMU versus Tulane. Southeast is Georgia versus Alabama. Sunbelt is App State versus Troy. And Southwestern is Prairie View A&M versus Florida A&M. Atlantic Coast is Florida State versus Louisville. And the Big Ten Championship is Iowa versus Michigan. Do you think if Georgia loses to Alabama, Alabama is just like automatically in the playoffs? I could see that. I could see a Alabama win getting Alabama into the playoffs. I think that's the only... They're taking down the number one team. And they still have a semi-decent record. I mean, like, they've they won... only lost that one game. One loss? Play. Yeah, I think they only have one loss. Yeah, so I, th- I could see... Washington's third with a loss. Or I no, think... Washington didn't lose. I was thinking of Oregon. Never mind. I think a Washington loss and a Michigan loss and a Florida State loss and a Georgia loss... <laughs> Think of all four top teams lose. I think if everyone above <laughs> Alabama loses, Alabama's in for sure. Yeah, I think if I think if you see that, I I don't know. I dude, it's hard. I could see it being like, oh, they beat Georgia, put them in at four. I could also see it being like, yeah, they beat Georgia, but like all these other teams are still undefeated. You know, like yeah. I don't know. It'd be it would be interesting. This is like the year to have. 12 a 12 team playoff <laughs> like there's so yeah. many good teams um and oregon. yeah and oregon um so yeah and for the first time in history we have a guest give it up for coach everybody Woo! we'll put in like some applause there so now we probably I don't know why we, we don't have, have a budget government <laughs> names and he doesn't sorry I, do you want to introduce yourself i don't i'm coach <laughs> i'm jeremiah's dad <laughs> That's even worse somehow. Wow. Um, wow, bro ruined it right off the rip. <laughs> yes, my dad's on the pod. So uh please submit yourselves so we don't have to, you know, 
Yeah, get, get 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 somebody else better in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first off, we got some next week in sports for you guys to wrap it up. Um, you want to talk about NFL games, Colin? You typically do. Yeah, I might as well. Um, Seahawks versus Cowboys. Game of okay. the week. That's America's oh. game. Is it actually? No, I just said it because the Cowboys were <laughs> in that Cowboys one. In it. I yeah. figured. Um, Thursday game, so you know, terrible. Dallas is about to put up four total points, and I just won a uh, fantasy. Broncos versus Texans. This is Hold on. a game. Is a, is a Dallas game in Dallas or in Seattle? I don't know. I believe know. it's in Dallas. It's in Dallas. They're going to beat Seattle by like 30. Oh, what? I need you to stop <laughs> talking, bro. For no. one, it's prime no. time. For the two, prime time game. Every person but, that my the person I'm playing this week has is a Dallas player, pretty much. He pretty much has the Dallas noticed, team for fantasy. Dallas has beaten every team at home by almost by 20 points or more. But have they won every home game? Yeah. Ain't no way. Ain't no way the Look Cowboys and Cowboys are the same. Look it up. Every home See, game they've that's won. One has win, been... two. They have eight wins. Three, four, five. Yeah, they have their five home games. They've won all of them. And by wow. an average of 20 or more. Wow. Yeah, uh, 45 what is to the 10, prime time? 49 to 17, 43 to 20. Dang. Is the primetime <laughs> curse going to affect this one, though? Better. Or are they going to break it? They better not. <laughs> I'm telling you, my the dude I'm playing in fantasy, his entire team is the Cowboys. I need the Cowboys to not do good. Uh, well, guess well, we'll see. It's the first game to look forward to. Colin, you want to keep going? <laughs> yeah, Broncos, Texans. This is a must win for both team. Um, both team? Single team? Yeah, I didn't say the S, and I just kept going. <laughs> Brain lag. <laughs> Broncos need it if they're if they have any shot of getting. You, you know, think the Broncos playoff. keep a six game win streak going? I mean, they've beat worse teams, so. They and then the Texans teams, need it yeah. because you know their division isn't like stack stacked, but they do have competition. They need to get that win. Both sitting at six and five. five. Yeah, both are on the bubble. Both are elite at the top of the bubble. So yeah, so both teams need to win. It's I the think battle it's of the be bubble. A super close game. I it's gonna be hard to pick one. It'll be a hard pick ups. for sure. Forty Nine ers Eagles. This is the conference championship. That's this game of the will week. Right test. It, it should be. This will test the Eagles if they're a real team. This will also test 49ers to see if they can compete against a real team. It should be a really good game. I don't see it being super high scoring, though. I see it being mainly defensive on 49ers' side and them holding the ball. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. hard part is I see, like, Jalen Hurts proves he can do pretty good against a tough defense. I don't know, like, if Brock Purdy has it in him to – fight against the Eagles. So could just Chris McCaffrey could just put up five touchdowns because they don't want to pass it whatsoever. He'll probably have three hundred scrimmage yards. Yeah, like <laughs> it's only gonna be him doing anything. And he'll be done for the rest of the year. Please stop. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. He's gonna be the reason you win this week. Um Bengals versus Jaguars. I don't really see this being a super good game like all around, like skill wise, Jags will have a good game because the Jags are like showing more and more every oh, yeah. week. But Bengals are just their season's over. Joe Burrow's out. Their defense isn't playing for anything. Like, yeah, they're. I think Jags win this game, and it. it, it I don't think it'll be even be that close. Did you see that the Bengals have to put it? Uh, give the NFL a bunch of video stating that Joe Burrow's wrist was healthy before the game started. It's like the NFL is thinking that his he was hurt before the game started. Because Which he was. Crazy because, because he showed up in a brace. A video of him with the yeah. brace on that they quickly deleted. Mm-hmm. That's so insane. now the Bengals have to have to submit a whole Prove bunch it. of video. So well, you yeah, have any that, designation going into it. That designation, so the other team can't plan for that. And that messes with betting, too, because now all of a sudden everyone's got money on Bengals and Burrow and stuff, and then he's actually not playing or he's hurt or whatever. Like, that's crazy. Um. Yeah. Rest of the week, we got um, number six Oregon playing number four Washington Pac-12 championship. Oregon's a nine point five favorite in this game. 
this is a must win for both teams if they want to stay in the playoffs or get into the playoffs. Um, this is also a big game for Alabama because we were saying how if Washington loses this, Alabama has more of a chance to get in. Um, so Alabama fans, this will be a big one to watch for sure Friday night. Um, then we got number 20, Oklahoma State versus number seven, Texas. Texas is opening at a 14.5 favorite. That's insane. I don't think Texas still has a chance at the playoffs, though, do they? I don't think so. I don't think I so. Mean, but I mean, anytime. Number seven, Alabama's number eight. That's fair, yeah. Anytime Oklahoma State and Texas play, though, it's always a good game. So, I mean, um, it, would be it would be interesting to see if they let Arch Manning do more of this game, too, um, depending on what it looks like fourth quarter, get more of a look at him. Um, probably one of the biggest ones this week, though, is number one, Georgia versus number eight, Alabama. Georgia opening at a six point favorite. This is a huge game. Georgia is probably Georgia's toughest matchup of the season. Um, because I don't think Ole Miss, I don't think Ole Miss is, I don't know, Alabama's, I don't, Alabama's so tough this year, bro, like to figure out. Um, but I think as long as Alabama's quarterback knows we're lying to scrimmages, that they have a good chance at giving them a run for their money. <laughs> as long money. as he's not passing it when he's already ran 20 yards, I think they'll be good. Yeah, so Alabama fans, this is a game to watch if you like Alabama. Um, What's going to happen to the playoffs when Alabama beats Georgia? We'll probably see Nick Alabama's Saban like, number one. at every halftime begging to get in again. Yeah, we're going to get Alabama and Georgia. It's somebody's going to get hosed. Could you imagine? I don't know if it... So, okay, so rest games, number three, Michigan versus number 17, Iowa. Michigan's 23-point favorite. I'm pretty sure there's... What's even <laughs> crazier is Iowa has opened as a first half over-under of 0.5 points and a second half over-under of 0.5 points, I believe. Maybe it's 0.5 touchdowns. But either way, they're opening it terrible, terrible lines. Like, no one thinks Iowa's doing anything in a conference championship. Um, and then number 10, Louisville versus number five, FSU. Um, Florida State's a 2.5 favorite in this game. This is a huge one for them. AP, the uh, playoff rankings came out, and Florida State's sitting at number four. No, five. Florida State's at five um, because they're still undefeated. So, I mean, they I mean, need – Almost. I feel like they almost blew it to the Gators. I mean – Yeah, no, did, it was yeah. A, that was a tough yeah. game. So, I mean – this is another one for Oregon and Alabama fans because if Florida State loses this, then that opens that doorway right away for um, – no, I think Florida State's fourth. They are, I'm pretty sure they are fourth. Because Oregon's no, I fifth. think Washington went above them. Yeah, but yeah, who's – Washington's three. Yeah, Washington's third now. That's right, yeah. Let me see. I have it. It should be – yeah, Florida State's fourth. So – insane conference championships coming up dude it's gonna be such mm -hmm. good football this weekend i'm so excited um You're probably but, not gonna watch a single game right i'll be done tra <laughs> i'm traveling um <laughs> moving up though we got hot takes hot takes um as always feel free to drop your hot takes on twitter uh spotify carrier pigeon wherever you share your news and we would love to include them and tell you how wrong you are um but first up, first hot take we got here, Ravens defense, best in the league. That is pretty hot. You're, you're getting hotter every week. Like we <laughs> started you. off week one and I was I started like, moisturizing. I started taking better skin. Oh, the, okay. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Are you drinking water now? I'm Have drinking you started, more water. Have you started drinking water? Ravens um, defense best in the league. God, that is a hard one. That's who wouldn't say it's the hottest take. It's, I don't think it's, it's the hot, but there was a game the other day that some one of the commentators kept saying historic defense, historic defense, historic like nonstop. It was getting about annoying. the Ra about the Ravens. No, I don't think it was the Ravens. I'm trying to remember who it was the other day. Probably the Browns, bro. Everyone's been hyping up the Browns. The yeah, Bears. it was the Browns. Yeah, it was the Browns because they were on the historic run for, I think, passing yards allowed per game, uh, points per game allowed, and then another one, like third down percentage. And then Denver just kind of obliterated that. Bro, I mean, down one. looking at – I mean, like, looking at <laughs> Ravens – Team statistics for 2023 so far. I mean, they've held opponents to 16 total touchdowns. 
They've given up 16 touchdowns this season. The Jets only have a total of 10 offensive touchdowns. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, that's kind of crazy, right? Like, that's that's a bit insane. That's wild. I want to see. I'm trying to. It's hard to like find stats for just specifically defense. Um, I have to look up who this next guy is because I don't know if that's hot or not. <laughs> turnover ratio. It's not pulling up turnover ratio. I just want like good defensive stats. All right, here we go. Defense. Um. No safeties. I don't think they're the best defense now. Broncos have a safety, so I mean. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> Broncos best in the league, I'm calling it. Geno Stone has six interceptions. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I they're definitely the, one of the toughest. I don't know who I would put, like, would you say the 49ers are better than the Ravens defense? 49ers, now that they have. Browns, Bears. Wow, you're just naming Dolphins. Teams. I was naming teams in the NFL. I was yeah, I, I didn't really. sometimes forget them, so I just had to Crimson Tide. Yeah. All right, keeping on the track of defenses. Um, I saw one post today. Someone said that Dexter Lawrence is the best defensive player. You got stats for that? Super hot. Yeah, he has twenty five solos and four sacks. That's pretty good. There's people We're that have the way season. more than four. Yeah. 20. I had to look him up because I was like, oh, he must be like really good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why this person's what well, this person's on, but that's insane. He's isn't he play for Dallas? Uh Giants. Giants. He's a Giants, Giants player. Wow. Yeah, that's right there, he just automatically loses it. <laughs> Legit forty one tackles, four sacks, um two pass deflections. Not yeah. horrible. Not like terrible, but nothing like ruining no bro's name. And I don't yeah, think it's I think that's super hot to say that because mm-hmm. I mean it's those stats aren't anything insane. No, like I don't think he's doing anything wild. I'm trying to find like a ranking. Miles Garrett's up there for defensive player of the year. He's the I favorite to win. That. He's the favorite to win. It's because Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett's. I gotta go yeah. to bed, guys. I'll see you on next week's uh, episode. <laughs> I mean, so you like good? this right here. This has the Browns' defensive yards averaged is two forty-seven. So I'm guessing that's like what average would they give up? Um, mm-hmm. Ravens are right behind the Browns though for like best defense. So I mean, I don't. I going back to the first one. I don't think it's too hot that the Ravens are the best defense. What is FF? Forced fumbles. Force. Okay, well, Miles Garrett has 24 solos, 13 sacks, and wow. four force fumbles. Crash. That's solid. Crash. Yeah. Miles Garrett is. Woo. Um, now he's injured, so it's like. Doesn't matter. You know. Broken arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's out. Um, all right. What about Steelers are the worst 7 and 4 team ever? They've been Ooh. the worst seven and four team for the last five seasons. <laughs> they're always the worst <laughs> seven and four team. Ever since the only Rob reason Lesberger. they're above that is because what's his face just has to have a season where he's like not like where he's over point five. Yeah, they're head coach. That's, it's the only reason that they are. I'm pretty sure he's never had a losing season, has he? No, oh, but that's what I'm saying. Like has. they're always the worst positive team. Yeah. It's like the most I, mediocre. Yeah. I think it's funny because like I feel like all these games, like, didn't they just be like the Bengals or something? But it's like, yeah, the Bengals just lost Joe Burrow. Like yeah, the Bengals lost a QB and they beat them by six. I feel all their like wins have come right after like huge um like losses for those teams. Like they just lost a player or something, you know? So like let's see who they They lost to the Texans thirty to six. Yeah, so like <laughs> They they beat the Bengals who lost Joe Burrow. They beat or they lost to the Browns who don't have a quarterback anymore. It's just a defensive team at this point. Um, beat the Packers, but like that's the Packers, and they, they barely beat them. They beat the Titans who have no idea what they're doing this season and only won by four. Lost to the Jaguars, but like Jags are a decent team. They beat the Rams, but like 
Okay, everyone. Everyone <laughs> That's has. On and off. <laughs> uh, they beat the Ravens, though. That one's crazy. That, that one's crazy, but that was towards like the beginning of the season when yeah. Ravens weren't doing as well. Yeah, and then the Texans dropped a 30 piece on the Steelers as well. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I think I also have an opening week against the 49ers. It's terrible. Those poor Steelers fans, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Saw so another post today. People are saying that Bill Belichick needs to retire. That's not even slightly hot. I'm surprised he is not already fired and off the team. Oh, because him and Kraft are buddy buddies. Kraft has been having problems with him. Kraft was like, yeah, if uh, if this doesn't work out soon, then he's not here anymore. <laughs> I wonder if they're holding on so he gets more wins to challenge Don Shula's um, win total. I wonder. Total. He's going to be there for another 20 years, that. though. <laughs> At this rate. <laughs> when you get two a season, he's he's going to be there for a long time. They're going to be they're gonna finally be like, breaking news, Bill Belichick passed, you know, He's the number one winningest coach of all time. You're like, sweet. And then it's, it's like in like the in the subtext, it's like he could have had this record ten seasons ago. <laughs> if he stayed on track that he had, he would have been done twenty five seasons. They ago. They have been one win away for the past ten seasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is not good. It is funny. Kind of goes much- to show you how much Brady meant. I was to gonna that say it's franchise. funny how much he's oh, yeah. exposed without Brady now. Like he's nothing without Brady, which I hate to say because I hate Brady, but it's like it proves it that Brady was the team. What's crazy too is like everyone like Mac Jones last season, everyone's like, yo, Mac Jones, like he's not he's okay. Like he's kind of doing decent. And then like there's the one game where like they pulled him and then like Billy Zapp or whatever threw like a 90 yard touchdown and everyone's like, oh he just lost his job. <laughs> Every time, every and then they were like, "We're gonna start Mac Jones this week." And everyone's like, "Bro, why?" Like Zap is killing. When he started it. the season. I was like, "You know, yeah. you still have." It Zappy, is so right? funny because like they would legit go two quarters of like Mac Jones, and they'd be like, "All right, let's let's get Bill in here real quick for a couple passes." They put him in touchdown in like three plays, and you're like, "Yep." And then like, cool, Mac, get back out there. Like, cool, no. Mac, it's your turn. And it's like, no, you don't just put someone else in because something good happened. Yeah, so I don't know, Doc. That's. That was insane. What was, what was hilarious is last year they were using it's actually Bailey Zappy. Oh yeah, is it Bailey? Bailey? I never. I think Billy Zappa is the Karate Kid guy. Dead? Yeah, it is. You might be right. <laughs> I always say Billy Zappa because he's in Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> no one corrects what, me. What's funny is last year weren't they what weren't they using a defensive coordinator as the co-offensive coordinator? Probably that whole team's defensive coordinators. Their head coach is a defensive <laughs> coordinator. <laughs> And now they're using Bill O'Brien, who used to be probably only hires defensive Texans coordinators. Coach. Yeah. Gosh. All right. There's your um, let's move on. We got uh, Sean Payton for coach of the year. <laughs> are we saying that? Are we saying that he's the reason the Broncos are six and five right now and have improved since last year already? Oh, A big chunk of it. What has changed between last season and this season? Head coach, that's it. Yeah. And defensive I mean, coordinator. probably some other things that we don't know about because they're not just like not telling us. They oh, started off bad. exactly how last season went. 17, my bad. My bad. 16, they did, they they did get it. They did get a new ball boy. They did get a new ball boy. You're right. So I guess we can't say it's, you know, maybe the ball boy's doing something different. Hey, I played ball boy and I was good. And I so did Mike helped McDaniels. The team. That was no, they started off the team exactly boy? last time. Like, 17-16 yeah, didn't score 18, so they didn't win. And I do, th- I do think there's something to, to say. 20. Like they what started one in like five or whatever, and he didn't let that he yeah. didn't let that get them into a point where it's like cool, we're here for the rest of the season. Like it, it was funny they were on like a th- two three game losing streak, and he was like, we can't lose this because then we'll be in a rut. And then they lost that game and they were in a rut. But then like he did pull them out of that. They're on a five game win streak, so I think there's something to be said about like being able to lead a team out of a one in five start. Right, the team's definitely – honestly, the team isn't even playing better. The defense started playing <laughs> is what happened. That's <laughs> what happened. When the I just offense saw that, is not. The, uh, over this five-game win streak, Denver is plus 13 in the turnover margin. They're getting in, more? Yeah, they have, they have gotten 13 more 
received 13 more turnovers. Yeah, because co- defense committed. is playing. In five games. Mm-hmm. In five games, plus 13. That's great. 13 turnovers in that many games? Yep. And the offsetting, offsetting. So that means it's probably yep. more turnovers because the Broncos definitely have had some turnovers in those five games. Yep. And Russ is eight touchdowns, zero interceptions, but he has fumbled it. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> I just saw that. That's crazy. I don't know, dude. I think that – I don't know about, like, coach of the year. I don't know, like, who would get coach of the year. I don't know what you like. Probably if it's not, like, yeah. If it's, like, most improved player where you're like, yeah, this team was trash last year, but this new coach is helping. That would be um, most improved coach. <laughs> maybe if Greg Olson turns this Panthers program around. <laughs> I think if he finishes with the winning season, then – a legitimate shot for coach of the year. I could see that. I think that's a fair qualifier seeing how the Broncos were last season and how everyone thought it was the Hackett Wilson relationship. I think Champagne coming in and fixing that and all of a sudden the Broncos have a playoff shot, like that's kind of crazy. He's better than mm-hmm. Dion. Better than Dion Sanders. <laughs> True. Um all right. Some people are saying that the Lions peaked already and that they're not going anywhere the rest of the season. Lions peak? Yeah, yeah, not with that coach. I think he's still got more to give them for the rest of the season. Uh, they'll get they'll get some more. Lions peaked. I mean, they almost lost the Bears. The only reason that they won is because the Bears tanked on purpose, <laughs> and then they did lose to the Packers. That's because the moon. The that was because the moon. Same way. That was because the moon. If you're a good enough team, you should be able to win <laughs> despite the moon. Not if you're werewolves. <laughs> They're not werewolves. We don't know that, bro. I just can't believe how insane every time we noticed that. Who noticed that? Waxing gib gib. What was what's it called? Waxing Waxing gibbous. They've lost every time. (laughs) Who who keeps track of that? It's like, oh my god. That's like, I guarantee you, the person that had that stat ready is a hardcore better. As a hardcore sports better to track the moon. It's the same dude that that that's in our fantasy football league that complained about. Some things. Oh, come and yeah, call it out, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, Lions play Saints, so that's an L. Bears, that's an L. Broncos. Are you? What are you guys gonna say about that? Is that an L? You're saying the Lions are gonna lose to the Saints? <laughs> was the Bears? <laughs> the Lions can score more than one touchdown. <laughs> The Bears were on track to beat them, and then they just stopped playing for three full minutes. What are you talking about? That already <laughs> basically the happened. Vikings. They did it against the Vikings. The Lions are just better at taking advantage of it. Okay, so then they're going to beat the Broncos because the Broncos can't <laughs> score a touchdown. Then they have Vikings, Cowboys, Vikings. So They'll beat the Vikings at least The one. sad part is, even if they have already peaked, they're still going to get a few wins yeah, Bears. because they're just, they don't have a strong schedule. Yeah, the Bears game for sure. Yeah, the um, Broncos game for sure. <laughs> I saw something that said that Tua and Tyreek is better than Mahomes and Tyreek. Honestly, they I don't even think that's hot. Like, I it think feels like a better statistically, connection. Statistically, they are better. Yeah. Yeah, but you think, too, Mahomes also had Kelsey to throw to. Really, Tua only has Jalen Waddle. Tyreek, he has Waddle, yeah. he has Mostert, uh, a Kane when he's healthy. Okay. They, Me. you guys are. That's fair. They have Chase Claypool. Like, are you even he, thinking before you say still things? Still doing this with Chase Claypool? <laughs> Don't think Chase Claypool has played a snap. Because <laughs> they're trying to keep him off the field. That I don't know just needs to how to check that, but I do not think he has played a single snap. It was the first ever. The it was the first ever trade where the Bears paid another team to take a player. <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh! I, think I totally insane. forgot. I forgot they had Claypool. It obviously hasn't in fact like impacted them that much. Might be on the practice squad. I'm not even kidding. When you look at their roster, I'm not seeing Chase Claypool. Oh, there it is. I went over it. That would have been hilarious if you went to the practice squad. Bro is like the, bro the same status as Joe Flacco. <laughs> questionable no on the practice squad oh it says 14 hours ago his status changed to questionable claypool Mm -hmm. oh they probably beat him with a tire iron to keep him off the field um all right let's go one more real quick before we go to pickums 
Um, Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert are overrated. No. Trevor Lawrence and Justin I know, Herbert? I saw I, Herbert, I could probably see someone's argument for that. You know, like, they do start like, one of the best pass offenses, I feel like, yeah. or up there. But, like, Trevor Lawrence is a hot take to say he's overrated. Because he doesn't have a lot around him. Mm-mm. And they're still on a playoff run right now. So, I mean, that's a bit much for me. Herbert at least has Eckler and uh, that receiver. I forgot his name. Me. But he's got, a, he's got a few people around him. Yeah. So, I feel like that's a bit of a hot take. I think just because – also, I don't think, like, the Chargers are losing games because Justin Herbert. Like, the Chargers are putting up 40 points and, like, losing games. This last week, he got held to 10 points, but they played the Ravens, who we've already said are one of the top defenses in the league. That's just, That is the top defense. Well, you guys didn't agree, so I said we're just going to round it. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I mean, like, that's a bit, that's a bit much for me. I don't, don't be talking to my boy Trevi Laurie like that. No, I like Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert. Watching oh, yeah. Justin Herbert play, I'm like, oh, this is so nice. Like, I think he plays really well. I just, I don't know how it could be fixed to the point where he's constantly winning. Yeah, but there's they need just a run something game, missing. They need a run mm-hmm. game. They have no they run have game. Eckler. Eckler's insane. Do they use him that much as a running back? Yeah, he was just out for them. like five games. Hmm. He was injured, but the second he came back, he put up like a – I think his first game back was against Chicago, I'm pretty sure, and he had like 150 yards or something. Like, okay. They have a run game. They have a throwing game. I'm wondering if it's – purely defense that's the it's reason all they're not winning games yeah and then trevor lawrence i honestly don't like him much just because he his face annoys me and his hair but <laughs> he is a good qb and like yeah i think jags are doing really well so yeah that's a crazy hot take that is yeah. hot. well <laughs> and now it is time for time. everyone's favorite segment but not mine pickums we had a kind of crazy week this week um as you guys know the new rule is that whoever wins pickums gets to pick primetime games um and the loser has to take the opposite and (laughs) thankfully i won a week where thursday had three games um honestly we should have just done friday and monday to make it fair but here we are Um, i said to only do one game thursday and then the monday game but to be honest, like it barely impacted you because I picked there were three games. It impacted me with two games that I wouldn't have said. They were offsetting. Two of them were offsetting though because you won one, I lost, or you won one, I won one. So it was offset, and then I won the third one. So either way, like it just offset. And if you think about it, I would have. I was going to take the Dolphins Friday, so you would have had the Jets. So it would. It's the same result anyway. But if we had done my way of just one for Thursday, you would have said Lions. I would have got Packers yeah. and won. Yeah. If we had just done the Monday, I would have got the Bears and I would have won. I would have won yeah. both of them. Well, the thing this week is because we have a guest, we're not going to do it that way because that wouldn't make sense. So it doesn't matter that I won. There you go. <laughs> no, it still matters to me. Well, Packers beat the Lions. I gave you the Packers. I shouldn't have. But, you know, there you go. I had a feeling going um, in. So, I mean... Cowboys beat the Commanders. That was an easy pick. I got a point for yeah, that one. Thanks. 49ers, Seahawks, another easy pick. I got a point for that one. Um, both called the Dolphins. I'm sure you were grateful that you didn't get stuck with the Jets after watching that game. Yeah. <laughs> um, I called the Steelers over the Bengals. You were rocking with your defense on that one. And that Only was the reason I took him was because the defense. Defense honestly played decent for most of the game, and then they just stopped. Um, neither of us called the Jaguars beating the Texans. That was a tough game, though. That was a, that came down to a single field goal to change it. So that was a tough one. Um, neither of us called the Colts beating the Buccaneers. Uh, I the called Colts were like that. Yeah, for real. I didn't respect your game. <laughs> um, I called the Falcons over the Saints. You were taken. You just like Jameis Winston so much. Um, I just took them because their defense is pretty good. Their defense <laughs> is pretty good. Um, we both called Giants. You called Titans over Panthers. I don't know what I was thinking on that one, dog. What were you? Th- I didn't even realize that when <laughs> I, was I was going thinking. through it. Why did you think Panthers were beating I think Titans? The, the Titans are such an iffy team. So I was like, if if the Panthers are going to get a win, I think this is going to be one of them. Just because if the Titans are having an off week, then that's an easy one for the Panthers. You know, I don't the even... Panthers are one and nine going into that, right? 
what was the Panthers' one win? I forget. The Texans with a last second field goal at home. Right. So they beat they beat the goat CJ Stroud. It was like fifteen to thirteen or something. Yeah. Um, neither of us called the Rams over Cardinals. Apparently, Call of Duty was popping this week. Um, I called the Broncos over the Browns. You said Browns. I also said 2014 for the final score. It was 29 to 12. So I lost relatively close. Which apparently is the only time in NFL history that score has been. Yeah, we said that earlier in the episode. Can you keep up, please? (laughs) I'm trying. You're here for it. (laughs) (laughs) No, that is crazy. We were talking about it. After they had announced that that was the only time, um, well, I looked I it up and I was like, "Crazy, that's the only time." It's I happened. looked it up and I was like, "What right. are other like possibilities?" And I was like, "Oh, you know, like two to two, two to four, four to four, four to four. And I was like, "Okay, so any possibility besides it's, like, <laughs> yeah, there's any possibility of score." That's why I thought it was crazy that twenty nine twelve. That's the first time it's happened. Yeah, when you can score pretty much anything. Yeah. Um, we both called the Chiefs, which the Chiefs got off to a 14-0 start with the Raiders up 14-0. So that was kind of I know, was I was weird like, at one point. I don't know. I was scared. I didn't care that much. Oh, um, that was wild. But we both called the Eagles, both called the Ravens. And then I took the Vikings over the Bears. You had to rock with your suck. Bears. Took your Bears. But I finished off by winning by two. So I Finished off all over me. Okay. About you finished off above. Me. Um. All right. So pickums. Um. <laughs> so the way this works is, I say the matchup, and then we pick them, and then, <laughs> then listen. That's it. We that's pick it. the team then. Uh. uh so uh, Seahawks about, is are are refs part of it? What do you mean are refs part of it? Should we <laughs> like pick the refs to win? We, yeah. Look at how many refs, games that they've been. The refs always win. The refs always okay. win because they bet and fix the game. Because they're the ones <laughs> doing it. Um, all right. Seahawks, Cowboys. Are we trusting the whole Cowboys win by 30 thing? I'm not doing score. I think Cowboys win. I don't think I, I think they're going to struggle to win. I just hope that they don't do too much. Yeah, I'm thinking Cowboys on this one. Seahawks haven't really shown enough. And if teams are struggling offensively in prime time and that's all the Seahawks have, bro, it's going to be a terrible game for them. And it's in Dallas. It's in Dallas. I got Cowboys. You have a score since you're going to be so cocky about what the score is going to be? Cowboys by 15. By 15? You got to give an exact score. What is that? Exact? Okay. I'll I'll go. uh, Let's go. Ooh, I don't even know if the Seahawks will score more than ten points. I think Seahawks put up six points, dude. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they hit ten. They won't hit double digits. No. Yeah, I think maybe one touchdown. They might get lucky with one touchdown. Nah, no, I'm, even that I'm second guessing. <laughs> Bro, just give me two numbers. All right, let's go. Thirty to six. I'll take your six. I feel like I was gonna. I was thinking thirty to six, so that would be interesting. Um, you didn't say that score is not counting, so you lose a point if it's not thirty six. Um, wow. Broncos Texans, bro, starting off with a tough one. Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna take. Broncos. Where's that? Is it like in it's, Houston? It's in Houston. It is in Houston. I'm gonna take Texans. I don't. Dang. Just feel I'm gonna like go Broncos. This could be the one. Of all the games, I feel like this could be the one that Broncos actually lose. I just don't think Houston's defense is good enough to stop a goaded offense like the Broncos. Because you haven't been watching. I mean, Russell Wilson has insane stats. You've seen Russell Wilson has insane stats. Um, 134 yards on like 20 something. The hard part is, I got I'm got to decide if I want to start CJ Stroud against Broncos or <laughs> Geno Smith against the Cowboys. You I'm gotta doing, go, CJ. I'm doing Stroud because Gino's on prime time. Trade you Fields? Yeah, if you could trade me Fields real quick for, a, I'll give you a kicker. <laughs> um, Chargers Patriots. I'm hoping Chargers, dude. I'm saying Chargers. It's I'm better. hoping they I feel get like it together. Has to be Chargers, right? It's There's gotta no way be. Chargers lose to the Patriots. There's no way. If Chargers lose to the Patriots, then Justin Herbert is overrated because there's absolutely. If, if Chargers, it's his fault, if it's if, his fault that they lose, yeah. If Chargers, remember. if Chargers lose to the Patriots, this is the last episode of Average Jose Sports Talk we're doing. We're done after this. 
Don't say that. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be an analyst. An analyst in a world where an analyst. the Patriots beat the Chargers. Now I'm scared. Are you saying it might be on our last ever episode? <laughs> Is it in Foxborough? Uh, it's in Patriot. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, that's a tough one. I'm gonna go with Chargers. Triple Chargers. Okay. What are the two teams the Patriots have beat? Because, like, who's losing to them? Me. Didn't they play the Jets? Is that one of them? Uh, they did beat I the Jets they... by five. Yeah. And did they, they beat, beat the Bills? No. I yeah. The yeah Bills they did. Oh yeah, they did by four. Twenty. 29 to 25. So two of the Bills' losses were the Jets and Patriots? Right, the Bills lost are them. overrated. <laughs> yeah. They've lost uh, to every they team better in their, lose, in their division. Bro, there's no way. That's crazy. The Saints beat them 34 to 0. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. is The thing that's been getting... The Eagles barely beat them. The things that... Yeah, the Eagles were a close one. Things that have barely been getting the Chargers is... Um, their defense, right? Like offenses have been able to score a lot, but they're playing an offense that is trash. So either Mac Jones right. is about to look like this second coming of Tom Brady, or it's going to be a Chargers thirty to like six game. <laughs> What's crazy is all of their losses, besides like a couple, have been super close. Yeah, three it, to the Giants, four to Colts, three to Commanders. Um. Four to Raiders. I think that's why Belichick's still getting a chance is because it's not like they're getting blown out by teams. Like they're putting up a fight against good teams and stuff. Like, so I mean, and they beat the Bills. So I don't think it's Belichick's fault completely. But um, Mac right. Jones has half of Justin Herbert's touchdowns, but double his interceptions. Jeez. Yeah. Mac <laughs> Jones has an insane amount of With interceptions 700 less yards. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh Cardinals Steelers. I'm gonna go Steelers. Where's it at? In Steeler. Here's way too much. Um <laughs> Bro's breaking them down. I'm gonna take the Steelers, but I mean with my luck, this is gonna be the week that the Cardinals just decide that they yeah, can you take the Cardinals, actually please? wanna play. <laughs> Let's see what uh, Duty double Duty XP weekend. Oh my gosh! When you look up uh, Call of Duty double XP weekend, it comes up with the Cardinals. <laughs> the like third hit says Cardinals at the end. That's hilarious. Um, let's see. No, 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 no. Next one will be active 22nd to 27th. So they just did it this weekend when the Cardinals lost. Um, no, which we means. didn't look it up. Like, what is which means we us? probably don't have double XP this upcoming weekend, which means Kyler Murray might be focused this week. I'm switching to the Cardinals. <laughs> I'm going Steelers. I'm keeping Steelers. I got to keep it different to keep it interesting. And I wonder, I want to, I want to test the water. I feel like Cardinals could hit. I do feel like they could hit. Because Steelers Uh, barely won last week because they're played with a team without a QB. Now they're playing a team with a QB. Yeah. So, I mean, the Steelers, the Steelers barely put up any points. And I think the Cardinals can put up points. And I think that's what's going to get them. So, um, they, we're locking in. Are you taking Steelers? I'm, I'm no, I'll I'll stay Steelers. Keep it different. Okay. Keep it entertaining. <laughs> um, Colts Titans. Oh my I'm gonna gosh! Take, I'm take the I Colts. forgot this week was just off. I told you this week's a terrible week. I'm taking the Colts. Uh, I didn't, like you said, I didn't realize that Gardner Minshew was actually like doing so solid. And I saw something else about like people are saying Gardner Minshew for comeback player of the year. Um, so Jonathan Taylor's out two weeks. Yeah, but Jonathan Taylor was out for like the first Zach Moss. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor missed the first few weeks. They're doing mm-hmm. fine. So I, think I don't I think dropped Zach, I think I dropped Zach Moss. Let me check fantasy Might real have to quick. Pick him up now. Let me just check <laughs> fantasy real quick. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Colts. Colts. <laughs> You're taking Colts. Dang it. Yeah, I'm going Titans. You're gonna rock Titans. Oh yeah. Is it because they beat the Panthers last week? Yes. <laughs> they're on. They're on fire. They're they're hitting a win streak right now. Colts are a one point favorite in this game because that's the lowest you can oh. give a team, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Half a point. 
<laughs> uh, Lions Saints. Are you rocking with your Saints pick, Colin? I'll keep it interesting. I'll say Saints. I'll take this. I was kidding when I said it, but I'll keep it interesting and I'll say Saints. Well, cool. I'll take Lions to go opposite that. I don't. I don't think that. I think Thursday was a fluke, bro. They always lose. Th- they have not won a Thanksgiving game in the past like six years. Like, I think it was just. They were in their head about it. They wanted to go get some food, whatever it was. I think they're coming into this week, and they're going to get the, the w. winning food that's provided to them when they win. But they want. They didn't food. know that. They've never won Thanksgiving. They don't know that's what you get. Where are you going, Dad? I'm going Lions. Ooh. Um. I, I all right. To, I had to put in a waiver request for Zach Moss. <laughs> Time to find out who has better waivers. Because <laughs> I did too. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna do it. You might as well. Um. Okay. Falcons. Jets. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna go Falcons, bro. I think Falcons. I don't know, dude. They're playing a good defense in the Jets. The hard part is, yeah, they are playing good defense. That's the reason I'm starting their defense this week. The Problem is they don't have an offense, but if defense can do enough, yeah, I'm gonna take Jets. Actually, I think the Falcons' offense isn't cracked enough to outperform the Jets' defense. The and I think Falcons, the beat... Jets' offense has to do just enough. Who did Falcons beat last week? Oh, that was the Falcons. Oh, was that shoot. the Saints game that I was like, yeah, why would they... you do that? So they it beat happened. a good defense. It's twenty-four fifteen. Which Desmond Ritter are we going to get? Oh, when hopefully get the, the one that throws two interceptions. <laughs> I guess the Saints. But Bijan actually played that game. Like, he actually mm-hmm. played. Drake London actually played, which you actually need. That's so true. on fantasy now. It's true. Not, not if I get Zach Moss. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is so hard. I'm just, I'm gonna take the Falcons still. I think Falcons still. I think it'll be like the Dolphins game where they the defense will have turnovers and they'll have points like a mm-hmm. fumble recovery or a pick six. But I think Falcons offensively just do better against the Jets. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, who are we, who are the Colts playing? I forgot the Titans. Titans, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think Zach Moss is worth it. Do I need a new running back anyways? I mean, Algiers okay. <laughs> Jeff, who's your pick for this week? Uh, I think I'm going to go Jets. I Ooh. think their defense is going to be okay. too much for Ritter to handle. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a low-scoring game. I don't see it being too insane. I also it's could see be low scoring. I just don't see the Jets' offense. I also could see enough. the Falcons surprising us and putting up twenty on the board. So who knows? Um, <laughs> right, okay. Putting up twenty like it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see them putting up fourteen the, points. Uh, the we Jets another, will score nineteen. <laughs> we got another nail biter here. Um, Dolphins Commanders. <laughs> <laughs> Commanders are like, four and eight. Commanders are four and eight. Take that into consideration. Shoot. Can we go half and half? <laughs> can we can we pick tie? We've never decided tie. Oh my gosh, we've never said tie. Could it's you imagine soccer where ties are common enough? Could you imagine but... if someone had picked that for the Bills Eagles game and they're that close? <laughs> I would have said tie, honestly, on that one. I think There's like... games where you're like, that's gonna be so close, it might just be a tie at the end. Yeah. Dad, who are you going? Uh, is it in Dolphins or Washington? It's in yeah, it's Commander. <laughs> yeah, it's still East Coast. I'm going Dolphins. It's all the same. That's true. Tyreek's Teams that are close nuts. like that. Like, there's enough. The thing is, Tyreek is on track for 2,086 yards or something. Yeah, I'm hoping this week he puts up like 200 to like really get enough close. because he has. They have a harder end of season. So I'm hoping um, in the next few weeks when they have an easier schedule, he'll put up like 200 a game, and then that'll boost my fantasy. Okay. <laughs> a little All right. selfish there. Um, <laughs> another big game here. We got Panthers, Buccaneers. I'm going to go Panthers. 
I'm a good Panthers. <laughs> this honestly is such a hard. I'm taking. <laughs> we got a. We got new head... just lose to. Uh. Colts. Yeah, but is the it? Colts are also a decent team. They're, uh, they're a decent team. Defense. Panthers got decent a team. new head coach. It's fresh. It's this boy's gonna come in. He's gonna do something crazy. There's gonna and be so that's many on the team already. Because so like many memes about it. Everyone's gonna talk about it. It's gonna be a huge thing for them. I think Panthers Wait, get the win. Did, did the Panthers fire their head coach already? Yeah, fired him oh, like I that one. Dang, you missed the beginning that? of the episode. Yeah, bro, we talked to that. Come on, Greg Olson said that if they reached out to him, he would. Uh, he, would he would take, take it. it. Then the owner of the Panthers also said he would. Uh, he wanted C.J. Stroud. <laughs> so oh, that boy. made Bryce Young feel well. I'm going to take the yeah. Bucks. I think. I think Bucks are still good enough that they can beat the Panthers. I think losing to the Colts doesn't say anything. I'm like done betting on them. the Bucks. I'm done betting on the Buccaneers. They've hurt me too many times. Can you actually put money? <laughs> you on breaking up the Panthers? I don't know. What's that? That'll really just it? seal that. <laughs> The the Bucks win it. What are you taking, Dad? Bucks. Taking the Bucks. I think. Let's see what they're opening up. Comes back. The Buccaneers are a two hundred thirty eight point favorite, and Panthers are a one ninety five on the money line. But it's only a five point. Pretty close. It's only a five point five point differential. So. Five point five point. Thank you. Um. Okay. Here we go. Big game right here. 49ers Eagles. I thought about saying a different team, but 49ers Eagles. <laughs> I was expecting an easy matchup. You said an actual hard one. I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> 49ers Eagles. Ty? Where? In Eagles. It's going to be in Philly. Oh, man. Ozen so Coast. The... Ty. Yeah. <laughs> seven to seven, Ty. Putting tie. I'm gonna say tie. Hey, no way. You, <laughs> point, you pointed it out, and I want to risk it for this game. This is gonna be the game to do it. I think I'm still gonna take the Eagles. I think I have to. They're at home. Yeah, I think they it's can the Eagles. score pretty efficiently, and their defense isn't terrible. So I think their defense can actually do something against 49ers offense. I think all the 49ers have going into this game is their defense, which will slow the Eagles down, but. They're such a powerhouse, it won't fully stop them. Yeah, I think I think the Eagles will get it this week. Um, I could see a tie, though, I mean, with how close the Bills game was. Hey, you heard it here first. Here's my thought, though. If the Bills were able to push the Eagles' defense that much, with Josh Allen only has, what, one, maybe two receivers, no running game, and you got the 49ers have a solid running game, they got a good coach that can scheme, I don't know. I think that I think this could be the 49ers. I'm going to pick the 49ers. Well, I could you're use. forgetting that the Eagles have the refs. You asked about refs to start this. <laughs> that's the a Eagles good point. Eagles have that the is, refs and fair. they're at home. At home. I don't know. That's I don't, a fair point. I don't know how big of a threat Christian McCaffrey's going to be. I mean, it felt like they were oh, holding the Bills play. on a run game, but like you said, like the Bills don't have a big run game. So, but they'll use Christian in different ways too, just like they use Ayuk and and uh, that yeah. other receiver. McCaffrey yeah. might have a triple. He might have a pass, rush, and reception touchdown. I just, I just don't know if Brock Purdy can do it against the Eagles. So, I that's think that's why I trust. I think Eagles. I trust the head coach. But I'm gonna say tie. Um, all right, <laughs> <laughs> you sticking with it? Heck yeah. Uh, nice. Browns Rams. Poo. After the week the Rams had, you say poo because this is a poo game. It is a poo yeah. game. I did not say poo though. After the week the Rams had, like they honestly looked really well. Like they look like they were playing good football. The Browns have the defense, but they don't have the offense for it. Like hard the part is Broncos hard part is if PJ's got to come in and play this game for the Browns, and if Miles Garrett's out, I think I think the Rams. That's true. I, mean, I don't this. think he's mm-hmm. out yet. I think he's still considered questionable. But yeah, but if he's if he's hurting, it's going to slow him down at least. I do, I do have to say I'm gonna say Rams. I do have to say, say the Rams just because I think Rams have enough defense and offense where the Browns only have defense right now, yeah. and it's a hurt defense. 
one too. Like, I mean, it seemed like the Broncos were picking apart the Browns with literally just like Sutton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's they have one receiver they used. The tight end scored a touchdown, yeah, barely. He was like barely scoring a touchdown. But Russell Wilson throws to one receiver. Jerry Juden didn't get a, a, an attempt to like the second quarter. I'm pretty sure. Hard part is Rams have uh, Puka and Cooper Cup. So like, and you line them up on opposite sides. All of a sudden, you've got to guard the whole field. So yeah, and a decent tight end. Yeah. So I mean, I think that the Rams Higby? are. Mm-hmm. I think the Rams will give him a tough one, especially if Miles if they're losing that pass rush in Miles Garrett, even if he's playing. I don't know if he's like a hundred percent, so that's going to slow him down quite a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go Rams. Super Bowl run. Um, <laughs> all right, <laughs> Bengals again, and then Monday prime time or Sunday prime time, baby. Chiefs Packers. Is Jordan love him? No. <laughs> Chiefs. Yeah. I'm gonna say Packers just to piss you off. That doesn't piss me off at all. I just got a free win. <laughs> oh no, I'm pissed. Good. <laughs> um, Packers the, beat a Lions team that were playing on a waxing gibbous or whatever. <laughs> the the Chiefs are opening as a six point five favorite though. They're barely giving it a touchdown game. I don't care if it's that, a one point win. I don't think the Packers win. I the so the reason I'm saying Packers is the Packers did stop the Lions run game, right? Like Packers were holding Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs to pretty low numbers. They had some good stops. Um Chiefs don't really have a run game like Chiefs that. have Pacheco. Every now, Bro, Chiefs have every Pacheco. Every now and then he'll go off, but Chiefs it's not, only have it's a run mainly game. rushing. They they're only passing. have a run game. And their pass no, game the is games that they win is when their passing game is insane. No. Nah. When Packers. Kelsey has 150 yards and three touchdowns. Hang on, hang on. We got to. Here's the question: Is Taylor going to be there? Though? That's what I'm looking up. That's. <laughs> we didn't look it up last week, and then we were wrong. Oh. Or two weeks ago, or something. She wasn't there. No, we were like, oh, she'll be there, and then we looked it up after the fact, and we we're like, she's not going to be there. Oh. And then they lost. I think that there's was no. There's no official status, so. I'm surprised they don't have a website that tracks just if Taylor Swift is going to be there or not. Literally, you all know what? The, what? We could be the first ones to start it, and then you could charge Swifties to get on there. We would have to find out if Taylor Swift is going to be there somehow. That's a cracker, bro. Hey, Taylor, <laughs> you showing up today? We call her person. A Taylor Swift tracker. <laughs> Are you going to be at the game? What are we? Um, let's see. Okay, she so. She the Eras tour is over now, so she's not performing anymore. Okay, um, she landed in Kansas City Monday, so she's back stateside. Eras tour doesn't resume till February seventh, so She'll there's there. a good chance. She'll be there. So it's in KC then. It's in Packers. She's just in KC because that's where her boyfriend lives. Saying Chiefs, I don't Ooh. Know. Yeah. Well, plus, say, what's the weather going to be like? Bro, I don't know. Just pick a team. Chiefs. Jeez. What are they eating? Gonna be... <laughs> what are they eating after, actually? I feel like that has more of an effect if they want to get to it or not. Uh, and then we got Monday's game Bengals, Jaguars. Oh, my. The Jags, I think. Yeah. If the Steelers can embarrass Bengals like that. Jaguars are going to have a nice little breeze. Through. Jaguars have a decent defense too, don't they? Yeah, they're they shut bad. down like insanely well. So yeah, so I, I think Jaguars. I think and they don't even have anything to shut down. <laughs> it's not even running. a it's not even a question of offense like it is with the Steelers, where you're like, oh, are they going to perform this week? It's like, no, nah, like the Jaguars have been pretty consistent in their performances. Um, yeah, so they're no, this isn't a conference game or a, a division game. Um, and Bengals let the Steelers put up a hundred yards per quarter. The yeah. Steelers, who yeah. couldn't get anything moving with any other team, the Jaguars have uh, Travis Etienne. They have Kirk. They have Ridley. Like Jaguars have the tools to move consistently. Oh yeah, Jag- I feel like it's Jags easy W. I got Jags. You think it'll be a good game though? It's Monday. <laughs> no, it'll be an awful game. 
<laughs> cool. He'll be ba- fifteen to five. I don't even know, bro. I haven't paid attention to his back. Even, yeah. Sweet guys. Well, there are our pickums for the week. So make sure to tune in next week to find out how bad we did and if I in fact call that tie. There's um, no way. Jake Browning is the backup. Wow. Huh. Um, but yeah, so make sure to like, follow, subscribe, share, tell your neighbor, tell your postman. Um, and sure we will bail on yourself to watch this podcast. That'd be crazy. <laughs> and we will uh, see you guys next week. But uh, thanks for tuning in.